Originally, I was going to try and survive over 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. And as you all know, I've gotten to 600 days. However, something happened. And this something wasn't just any random thing. It was absolutely massive. Long story short, I'll spare you the details since I explained it in my surviving 100 days in the modded end video. But recently, my computer ended up breaking. And after the long process of replacing the parts to fix it, I had lost all of my Minecraft worlds and backups. Which means, unfortunately, this run had come to its end. Which, honestly, really saddens me. But that's okay, because throughout these 600 days and almost a full year of playing this world, I had so many great experiences and I've grown so much as a person. When I released my first 100 days, I only had 4,000 subscribers on YouTube and just look at how far we've come. Throughout these videos, I've transitioned from the extremely self-conscious and awkward person that I was to the still self-conscious and all also still awkward person that I am now, except now I believe in myself and I have all of you to thank for that. So whether you've been here from the start or you joined us along the way, I figured you would all love to see my full 600 days experience as one massive movie. And here it is, all four hours of it, which if you watch through all of it would mean so much to me because it would help me out tremendously. Also, if you do go on to enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe and leave a like because those also help me out a ton. Anyways, here is the entire story of me surviving 600 days in hardcore Minecraft. So day one was going super great right off the bat. This man came out of nowhere as I was chopping wood and started smacking me up and got me down to half health in the first minute. Then we found a cool cave and I was getting lots of resources until this boy gave me a miniature heart attack. Stupid creeper in the cave. I didn't even see him. I looked back and he was nowhere to be found. I don't, I don't know where he was, but that was not cool. So I was out of there real quick. Then it was time to become friends with the local animals. And by become friends, I mean eat them. So that's what I did. We went on an absolute slaughtering rampage. Getting... I mean, don't don't look at some of the footage, because I may have missed a lot, but we were killing every cow we could find, you know? Gotta get food somehow. And then it started getting dark, so to end the day, I did what any other sane person would do, and I built my way up into a tree, placed some furnaces, and waited out the night while smelting my food and my iron. On day two, as the sun rose, I decided to make myself a full set of iron armor, so I could at least take some damage while out and about. It's not quite enough to survive in hardcore, but it's enough to get me by. And then I paused and watched the beautiful sunrise since, you know, it's not something you see every day in Minecraft. I mean, it technically is, but only if you look at it, okay? Don't sue me. Then with the spare iron that I had after making the armor, I decided to make an iron pickaxe and we decided to head out adventuring. After a long day of adventuring, I eventually found this cool village, which I mean, it doesn't have any cool structures like a blacksmith or anything, but you know, I can't complain. It's a place to stay for the night, and I happen to have found this cool blast furnace, which will save me some iron in the future. On day three, just like any other good Samaritan, I robbed these villagers blind of all of their wheat. Then I caught this skeleton venting, but don't worry, no emergency meeting had to be called because the crewmates had already won. And then I spent the rest of the day in a nearby cave mining lots of iron and coal, and I made a whole bunch of new tools. Broke my pickaxe, so I had to make a new one, made a sword, and now we have a bucket. We are moving up in the world. On day four, I decided this village didn't really feel like home, so I stole their bell and continued my journey to find a better home. Then I struck literal gold. I found an incomplete nether portal with a whole gold block and a golden apple. And then I stole all the magma blocks because I don't know why. I don't need them yet. And then as it began to get dark, I decided to make this cozy little dirt shack and cook my supplies and go to sleep. On day five, I finally realized I was missing a shield. This entire time I had been running around without one of the most important things. No big deal, right? And then this stupid creeper decided that he was big brain enough to try to ambush me on the way out from my own house. And then he sat there and he teased me. So I left. And then, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I spent the rest of my day trying to build a nether portal with water and lava, and what can I tell you, I am not dream. 
On day 6, I decided to go into the new nether because I was excited about the nether update and all the new stuff, and this is my first time experiencing it. And, what can I say? It's beautiful, and it is absolutely terrifying. Literally, I was so scared. Just, here, here, listen, listen to my reaction. Oh my god. Uh. Uh. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Look at this spawn. What is this spawn? Get me out of this place. Oh my god. On day 7, I finally found a place I wanted to call home that was perfect, right on the side of a beautiful beach. So I began flattening out land so I could start to make myself a base. On day 8, it was all about deforestation. Lots of deforestation. Cue the tree murder montage. On days 9 through 10, I began building my house, and while I was working, these guys showed up. And I'll admit, I kind of handled them like a baby, but then this dude over here, while I was blocking, decided to deal one heart of damage every shot, and I was pretty scared. This was not a fun experience, and I've definitely, I'm definitely lucky that I was not in a village still, because I would have started a raid, and I probably would have died here. So, we got very, very lucky. On day 11, I woke up to this beautiful man's, and what do you know, he dropped me nothing. I spent the rest of the day building a fence, Luke the Notable style, around my base so that way nothing could get within 20 feet of me. I was being 100% careful with this playthrough. On day 12, I finished building my wall, and what do you know, right after I did, a gang of zombies decided to come raid my base. Sucks to be them because I have a wall now, losers. On day 13, I worked on my chest organization, but more importantly, I got some new doggos. Who wants to see chest footage when you can see me get doggos? Look at these adorable boys. We now have some terrible house defenders. On day 14, more of these jerks showed up. Joke's on them though, because I have bows and I know how to use an axe now. This is my first time getting used to critting with an axe. On day 15, I decided to start digging down for my brand new mines so we could start amassing Diamondes. I decided to go all the way to Y11 since that is the perfect spot to dodge lava pools. If you dig into a lava pool, you run into the top of it and you can easily stop yourself before going straight into the lava. On day 16, for some reason I have no audio, but I found my first diamonds while mining down. On day 17, I still have no audio, which sucks because I can't hear the beautiful sound of the XP, but it's okay because I found a mystical eight vein of diamonds. It's so beautiful, just look at it. We now have 10 diamonds and we are on our way to getting a full set of diamond armor. On day 18, it was back to the mine. I was determined to get more XP and make an enchantment table and enchant my new pickaxe friend. I also guess I was mining under the ocean because I hid an underwater ravine, but it had diamonds, which I really had to work for. Did you know that in hardcore, drowning hurts? A lot? Well, I did. I spent all of day 19 in the mines mining for more and more diamonds. I was getting so lucky with all the bigger veins, and I also had a couple of small veins. However, the main goal was to get a full set of diamond armor. And what do you know? I happened to end up with just enough diamonds to make that full set. So I call today a huge success. On day 20, I began smelting all the cobble I got from mining so I can use it to expand the wall around my base. Then I started clearing out land to expand my base. And yes, I made a diamond shovel this early and before I made the diamond armor. Sue me. Also, the game audio's back. Yay! Just in time for you to hear me dig dirt. Also, <clears throat> uh, cue epic dream time-lapse digging montage. Then this super rude trader interrupted my epic dream montage, so I had to teach him his place and I evicted him from my land. On 
on day 21, it was time to finally get a cow farm going because I had no renewable source of steak and I desperately needed my fix. And then I was attacked by another horde of zombies. Fun! Made quick work of them. And then I decided to get ballsy and I took on my first enderman. And he dropped nothing. What a cheapskate. On day 22, I decided it was time to add some sheep to my already overcrowded compound. And then I spent the rest of my day messing with this automatic chicken egg producer. So in the future, I could have an infinite source of feathers. Not much happened on day 23. I was just chilling around the base until I found this fox just plucking fish out of the ocean left and right. And then at that moment, I decided he had to be mine. In order to acquire my new friend, I went to the forest and started gathering some berries. And then I went back to him with a boat and realized I really couldn't do much to get him. So from here on out, he will be known as Boat Fox. He will spend the rest of his life, probably, in this boat until I actually find another mate for him, or an easier way to actually capture him. Days 24 through 25 were monumental. I went out and got my fox friend a new mate. And what can I say, it was not easy. I finally managed to catch the fox, and now I can bring it back to my base. And then real quick before I got the other fox, I decided to put the trap doors on top of my chicken farm just in case they decided to get any ideas. I did not want to get more chickens. Talk about how much a pain this fox was to get on land. Like, listen, my dude, please just go, go on, to, just, just go, please. After that, I made a maximum security prison for them so they could mate. And I found out, hey, they can have babies inside of boats. Weird. Anyways, look, fox baby. On day 26, it was time to commit crimes against cow kind and slaughter all the adults. And now that my cows were orphans, it was time to move to the mines for the day. And I found two meager diamonds, but it's better than nothing, so I'll take it. On day 27, I finished the enchantment table and the Minecraft gods blessed me with these two insane pickaxes. We got Silk Touch, Efficiency 4, and we got a Fortune 2 Efficiency 4 with Unbreaking 3. And I found this nice 8 vein of diamonds with Fortune 2, I ended up with 13 diamonds. Not bad. Later that day, I was attacked by Sky Demons. Maybe this would be a reason to build myself a roof. You would think so, but I did not. Anyways, I got lots of membrane from them, so now I can make slow falling potions. Those will come in super handy when I fight the dragon. For days 28 through 30, I proceeded to run around and light up my land just so I had a lot more space without hostile mobs spawning. And then I spent the rest of those three days in the mines. Cue epic diamond montage. We ended up with a stack and an additional six diamonds from that trip. We were living life like Larry. On day 31, I came back up to assess my loot and made myself a full set of diamond armor. And I even enchanted it. Now we are all decked out in full diamond and we are ready to go. Day 32, I'm not sure what I did because I didn't write anything down in my notes. So we're just going to skip it like nothing happened. On day 33, I made a brand new diamond sword that I gave looting three to. This baby is going to be my best friend throughout the series. Then I went and killed a bunch of cows, which for some reason I didn't just crit them. I sat there potentially killing the babies by using Sweeping Edge. I don't know what's wrong with me. Don't judge me. Anyways, with this new influx of leather, I can make item frames so I can begin actually organizing my chests. Now that I felt like I was more prepared with a full set of diamond armor and tools, I went back into my mine tunnel in order to find the mine shaft that I ran into in hopes of finding a cave spider spawner. I need to get XP somehow, and this is the closest dungeon I could find to make a basic farm. I know there's probably easier ways to do it, but what can I say? I'm stubborn. On days 35 through 36, I decided to make a map and start exploring around my house to see if there was anything interesting. I found this cool village, except it was too far from my house to bother transporting them. I would probably be better off just curing zombies at that point. On day 37, I realized it was getting dark, so I started to head home, and on the way there, this jerk skeleton decided to break my shield. 
And then I walked in on these two villagers doing whatever this is. And I left. On day 38, I returned home from my long journey, and I brought four new friends! Yes, that's right, I got four new doggos on the way home. As if I didn't already have enough friendly mobs in my house. On day 39, I decided to go back to the nether because we needed supplies, and, well, my spawn wasn't the worst. I was still inside of a basalt biome, but at least I had tons of gorgeous blackstone to work with. On day 40, I decided it was time to start strip mining for netherite. Just to be extra careful, I wanted a full set of armor before I could traverse the nether, However, it was not going that well. I found none. On day 41, I decided that netherite was not going so well, so I decided to just dig into this wall. I mean, I don't know, I heard piglins. So I mined towards them, and I found this new safer area. Then I honestly kind of just stood there in awe. There was a bastion, an abandoned portal, and the biome with trees and endermen. It was all great, but it was not what I needed. I needed netherwort. Then I had the most terrifying experience in hardcore yet. These mans almost killed me. I never replaced my shield, and these guys did not stop. I was freaking out. This was the- I was out of there. I left- I left the nether. I was done with the nether for now until we were more prepared. On days 42 through 46, I went back to work on the spider farm because I definitely needed XP. This took way longer than it should have, but the outcome was definitely worth it. Just look at how much XP this farm gives me. Plus, I get lots of strings, so Win-win for future villager trades. On day 47, this wandering scam artist decided to pay my house a visit. So I decided to kill him for his leads because I don't have any slime yet and I wanted to pull things around. Don't use that out of context. On days 48 through 50, I run around the overworld placing nether portals in hopes of finding a new better spawn that had, you know, nether wart. And what do you know, it brought me right across the lava pool from my first set of portals. Luckily though, I did spawn closer to the Bastion, so I decided to go check it out in hopes of finding some nether wart. Now let me just tell you this real quick, going to the Bastion was an absolute last resort for nether wart. These things on hardcore are deadly. They are some of the scariest structures I've ever seen in Minecraft. Honestly, the whole time I was in this Bastion, I was uh, pretty scared. I can't lie, my hands were very sweaty, but it's all okay, it's okay, all is good, because I got one netherite scrap and the best music in Minecraft that could ever exist, Pigstep. That's all I needed, and I was out of there. Unfortunately, we did not get any nether wart, so this trip was technically a failure, but it's okay. I got in, I got out, and I did not die. On day 51, I better prepared my inventory with more gapples and boats, so that way no brutes could get too close to me, and my new crossbow, and I went back to the bastion. Things are going well until this jerk nearly ended my whole career. It was safe to say I almost had a heart attack. However, I cleared the entire bastion and there was no nether wart, so back to the drawing board. For days 52 through 55, I explored the nether further in hopes of finding a fortress or some nether wart. And once again, I came home without either. Honestly, I feel like I always get some of the worst nether spawns every time I generate a world without a seed. On day 56, I found a cool abandoned portal in the nether and got two free blocks of gold and a chest with some useless crap, but it's cool. Definitely not a nether fortress though. On day 57, I went back to the spider farm to get lots of XP to fix my armor since the nether was not an easy place. Just listen to those XP orbs. On day 58, it was back to the nether and I found a crimson forest and look, another bastion. Yay, maybe this one will have some nether wart because otherwise crimson forests are nothing but death. On day 59, I decided to go to the new bastion and oh my god, did this brute almost end my entire career. This man got me so low and I was out of there. Fun fact, did you know that brutes can chase you for hundreds of blocks? Yeah, I didn't. Did you also know that vengeance feels so sweet? I did. Stupid pig. After killing the brute, I went back to the bastion, and I cannot make this up, it's literally like something from a movie, but there is a patch with one singular nether wart in the center of the bastion, in the middle of lava. What even is this? On day 60, I went back to the bastion, and I made this little piglin into an orphan. But don't worry, I quickly sent him to the shadow realm after. Then, I found this cool single chest full of loot, including my first set of ancient debris. Then I found this double chest that had even more ancient debris. We are moving up in the world. On day 61, I stopped by the house to drop off all the loot from my unfinished bastion run that was in progress, and I decided to jam out to some pig step. 
truly one of the best music discs in Minecraft. Four days 62 through 63, I spent the entire time in the bastion and I uh, witnessed this pile and then it became a massacre. I finished stealing their stuff and still no nether fortress in sight. On day 64 through 65, I went mining for netherite and I found a good amount. But between the explosions, the fire damage, and my pickaxe almost breaking, I realized that getting the full amount of scrap to make a full set of armor this early wasn't quite looking realistic, so I need to shift my focus on getting villagers so I can get mending. Also, I found out what a lodestone is, and it is a super cool concept. So now I have a compass that'll point me back home no matter which direction I go. On day 66, I had the brilliant idea to build another portal in the not so nearby village, and it worked perfectly. I got all these villagers to go through the portal and straight through the nether into my mining area. I quickly got him up the ladder and boom, we have our first villager. I can't wait to force him into a life of labor. On day 67, I wasted the entire day trying to get this guy to re-roll until he got mending. For some reason, each roll took like five minutes for him to change jobs. I later figured out that it was because there was too many other blocks that had rolls nearby and he was trying to take one of those. On day 68, I realized that this whole process was taking too long. So I went back to get another guy to roll for mending. And this guy was a complete jerk. Then of course, the second I finally get him home, the first villager started going absolutely ham on rerolling his trades. I'm pretty sure it's because I broke more job blocks when the second villager wouldn't cooperate. I kept rerolling the first dude until I got Silk Touch. Me likey. So I moved on to the second villager and I got Fortune 3. I was conflicted, but I had to keep rerolling and I finally got Mending. Now, I need villagers to breed and become a source of emeralds. It is time for capitalism. Also, while I was out trying to get more villagers, uh, I witnessed this with all these zombies ganging up on this iron golem. Day 69. Stop laughing. I went out looking for some sugarcane because I didn't want to lose the mending trade of the villager and I didn't have any paper. And then I found this abandoned shipwreck with some loot. And then this stupid witch decided, hey, that's my loot, back off. So I did. Wasn't that good of loot anyways, jerk? Screw you! On day 70, I went back to the village to capture two more villagers who are gonna be in charge of baby making. Winky face. At this point, I'm realizing how much of a mess my base is becoming, but that's okay. I was on a mission to kill the ender dragon by day 100. After making the villager breeder, I decided to give these boys some jobs and I ended up ending the day with some capitalism. On days 71 through 72, I spent the whole day AFKing for XP at my cool spider farm. Not gonna lie, this farm's actually super inefficient and I need a new XP farm and I need it now. On day 73, I went back to the nether, hopped on a strider and began desperately searching for a fortress, still with no luck. But I did find this cool warped forest and now I have warped mushrooms for days. No hoglins getting anywhere near me. On day 74, while I was out and about looking for a fortress, I found another bastion. And unlike the other two, this one was really close to a cliff, so I could easily cut off all of the piglins, go upstairs, and just rob them blind. And look at all the loot that we got. I opened two double chests and one small chest, got some more pig step discs, and hella gold. And these boys didn't even see it coming. On day 75, I went back to the nether, but this time I explored a new direction in hopes of a nether fortress. I was using my strider to go across the lava, and finally, a hidden fortress. Not only did I find my blaze spawner that I needed, but there were two blaze spawners close enough to each other where I could make a crazy blaze XP farm in the future, which would blow my crappy spider farm out of the water. I also built a new nether portal there to see where I ended up in the overworld, and, uh, I was very far away. On day 76, I headed home and made my fire resistance potions, and now I could finally make an ender chest. Now I had a couple more things to do before I could kill the ender dragon, get a full set of netherite armor and tools, breed my villagers, and get crazy enchants for my netherite armor. 
and then we are ready to go to the end. Days 77 through 90. Yes, that's right, 13 days. I went down to the nether and I bed mined over and over and over, getting tons of ancient debris so I could build myself a full set of netherite armor and netherite tools. And I ended up with about 15 ingots. And I didn't know how netherite properly worked. I had thought you had to build a fresh set of armor. I didn't know it was one ingot each, so I am well prepared. I thought I was underprepared, but we are good to go, and it is almost time to fight the Ender Dragon. On day 91, I witnessed my villagers being delinquents, but hey, they had a baby and it tried to escape. I don't think so, my dude. I then escorted him to his new prison. Then I awkwardly watched these two do their thing from the corner of the room. On days 92 through 93, I kept rerolling librarians and I got a looting three broy. Why'd I say boy like that? Then I made a new section for my villagers and on my first try, I got another mending villager, which I had to be strong. I had to reroll him. I didn't need him. And then he gave me mending again. Anyways, I kept rerolling, and finally I settled with Infinity because it was going to help me kill the Ender Dragon since I didn't want to worry about arrows. On day 94, I got an expensive Feather Falling 4 villager that I really need for the dragon because I cannot MLG Water Bucket to save my life. Literally. Then, this absolutely blew my mind. Apparently, you can use a smithing table in one netherite ingot to upgrade your already existing diamond armor to netherite. <laughs> I didn't know this before. Okay, this is future me writing this, reading this from my old notes. I didn't know this back when I wrote these notes. I know this now. So don't look at me like that and be in the comments like, oh, he doesn't know how netherite works. This is me. I, I recorded this weeks ago, okay? Anyways, I am absolutely set on netherite. So we are pretty much prepared for the dragon when it comes to armor. Now I just need a ton of XP to finish the upgrades and I am ready for the end. On day 95, it was back to the crappy spider farm to grind some XP. On days 96 through 98, I spent them grinding and finishing up my netherite armor and gear and making a brand new bow. And I finished it off by prepping some potions. We were officially ready to find the stronghold. On day 99, now that I had prepared all of my loot, it was time to go out and look for the stronghold. And this was Surprisingly not that bad. It was actually pretty close to my base. However, I did get stuck in the water over here. The ender pearls decided to go down to the water and I was like, is it is it here? Do I have to go all the way down there? But luckily it was not in the ocean. After finding the spot, I quickly dug down and started to look for the portal and within no time I had found it. And then Silverfish broke this block and let the lava try to kill me. Sucks to be you Silverfish, I have full netherite. After healing up and killing all of their family, I went back to the portal just to find out that there was only one Eye of Ender. Really game? One Eye of Ender? Could I have been any less lucky? So I went to the surface to try to find some endermen. In this moment right here was make or break for the 100 days. If these endermen were not here and it was not still dark out, I would not have been able to kill the ender dragon by day 100. The video would have been ruined. This is it. The moment you've all been waiting for. Day 100. At the beginning of day 100, I filled the portal and proceeded to jump through and I was ready to take on the ender dragon. Honestly, for this fight, I'm pretty proud of myself. I knew that I was well over prepared. I had slow falling potions, I had gapples, I had all the armor and tools I needed, but there were still some times that I got pretty low. And overall, I beat the dragon in like six minutes, which I'm pretty proud of. Believe it or not, this is actually my first hardcore world I have ever made. I've been playing Minecraft for so long, and this is the first time I've ever felt this feeling of killing the ender dragon in hardcore and honestly i was proud i spent the rest of the day running through the xp and then i left through the portal on day 101 i was welcomed home after my long journey by this almost dead iron golem no clue what happened to him then i decided it was finally time to upgrade my sword i went out and bought sharpness 4 and sweeping edge 3 and then i had the ultimate name for the sword. I decided to rename it E-Girl Eliminator. With this god sword by my side, no E-Girls will be safe. Then I decided, since I didn't have enough time to explore the end in day 100, 
I would go back and get shulkers and an elytra. It was also time to get the dragon egg that I forgot, so I made a piston because at the time I was recording this, I thought I needed a piston. Turns out you can just, you know, right click it, pl place a torch down wherever it goes, break it and it'll fall on the torch, you can get it. I didn't know that, but I decided to head towards the end. On day 102, I ended up taking a slight detour and while heading towards the end portal, I ran into a roaming band of e-girls. Don't worry though, I made a new sword just for the occasion. Now that I had the e-girl simps curse, I had to be careful when returning home from the end because my compound is now a village. Or at least Minecraft thinks it is. After getting back to the stronghold, I decided to grief the library for books. A man's gotta make emeralds somehow. After relocating the portal, the first thing I did was jump in and I decided to lure some endermen in with the hopes of free candy and Wi-Fi. There was no candy or Wi-Fi. Now that I had ender pearls, I went to grab the ender dragon egg. This was actually my first ever egg that I've grabbed. I always kind of just left them behind. So in a way, this was kind of special to me, even though I used a piston. Don't yell at me in the comments, please. On day 103, I built up to the Farlands portal and looking down at the void during this, I could feel my heart stop. Like my palms were sweaty, knees weak, arms spaghetti. I was, I was not having a good time building up here. And I feel like I'm always unlucky when it comes to these things. They always spawn so far out over the void that, you know, all it takes is one misclick or letting go a shift and Yoink! There goes 100 days, let alone 200 days, and all of my effort. But I did end up getting up to it and threw the Ender Pearl in, and surprisingly enough, we actually ended up with a real set of End Land and not just an island that I would have to build away from. So this was looking good. Things were looking good. After a surprisingly short distance, I actually ran into two End Cities, but neither of them had an End Ship, so no Elytra quite yet. I spent the rest of this day building my way over to them since there is no clear path to get to them. I spent all of day 104 looting end cities and killing shulkers. Honestly, there's nothing more satisfying than end city loot. After killing all the shulkers, I already had enough for four shulker boxes, which I really desperately needed because my inventory was ridiculous. I had no space for anything and I struggled just to make the shulkers. Also, as I was looking into the distance, I realized that I was wrong and there was an end ship in the next city over. We were going to check off one of our goals on day 104. We were going to learn to fly. On day 105, I went to the next end city and I gave every single shulker there a promotion to unalive. I took their bodies to store my items in. That sounds pretty weird, I know, but you know what? Let's roll with it. Q shulker montage. Then I found 11 diamonds in this chest. I have never seen this many pure diamonds sitting in an end chest before. That is a big pog champ moment. Then I was hit by the shulker boy and I decided to turn it into an MLG slow fall onto that sweet end ship, but I missed. So I, I don't want to talk about how many times I failed getting onto the ship, but long story short, we got our elytra and we got some dank loot and of course, I grabbed the dragon head. We officially checked off learning to fly from our list of to-do. On day 106, while looking for a portal back to the end spawn, I found another city, which then turned into two cities. This is super lucky because I didn't have any fireworks to use my new elytra, so all these cities were just icing on top of the cake. In the first city, it didn't really have much loot, so I just bullied the shulker, and then I left. And the second city had a whole bunch of enchanted diamond armor. Then I wasted the rest of my day struggling to find a portal back home. On day 107, I had a problem. I was ready to go home through the portal, but I still had the e-girl simp debuff, and teleporting home would probably start a raid. I guess I had no choice but to find out. 
I hope my villagers are okay because a lot of them are definitely exposed. Huh, well, apparently you lose the Illager debuff when you change dimensions, so mission success. I ended up with 18 shulkers and I found my Elytra. On day 108, I caught this man's trying to escape my prison camp. I I mean compound. He was trying to escape my compound. Then I partook in some poorly priced capitalism. Man, do I need better villagers. Then it was Elytra time, which I appropriately named a Elytra. I mean, it's not my best name, but it will do until I think of a better one. Then I made my flight three rockets and it was time to take this boy for a good night flight. And I found an abandoned portal with free gold and loot. Now that I have an Elytra, I could easily travel to the Nether Fortress and make that double blaze spawner farm. On day 109, I died my Shulky boys. And then I decided to go into the Nether to visit the double blaze farm. Just look at all these mans. But none of them can stand up to the E-Girl Slayer. After getting some dank XP and blaze rods, I went back to the overworld. I decided to make a lodestone so I could fly back here in the future. I didn't have the redstone to make a compass, but I saw an underwater ravine, so I decided to go down there. While down here, I found six diamonds. I tied the compass to the lodestone and started to fly. On the way home, I found a desert temple and I found a village, but I've already explored them, apparently. I don't remember coming through here, but okay. On day 110, I flew over a Mesa biome, and you know I had to stop. Mesas are known for having tons of exposed mine shafts, gold, mine carts with chests, and spider spawners. And what do you know? I literally found all of the above. I stopped by a couple of chests, and I got myself four name tags. And I even found the coveted surface cave spider spawner. However, I was done with cave spiders. I already had a farm and I had zero interest in it. So I left. After flying home, I decided to start making a netherite shovel that was going to become a god shovel. After making my shovel, I went to go gather sand. Lots of sand. And you know what that means. In the first 100 days, we did a dream sand speed run and now we continue the tradition. But right before the speed run, I found an underwater portal with some loot and I was jumped by this wandering band of sea orphans. Anyways... Just look at all the sand I got. And now I have a netherite shovel that I can make into a god shovel. That is if I was paying attention and I totally didn't just break it, wasting a netherite ingot and a shovel. You will be missed, shovel. On day 111, I made an auto smelter and then I realized that I traded all of my coal to the scam artists. So I guess I'm using the lava buckets that I had saved for the blaze farm. Which is what this glass is for, by the way. I spent the whole day smelting this glass. Then I began collecting new willing residents. I mean, come on, all my residents, I love, like all the residents love it here. So of course they're willing. Anyways, these boys will be infecting new villagers so I can start making mad stonks. After trapping these boys, I gave them a roof so they wouldn't burn from the sun, and I decided to give them a little guardrail in case an iron golem decided to walk in here and just yeet one or two of them. And then this gang of midget zombies thought that they could fill some Minecraft me, but they were wrong. On day 112, while still waiting for the glass to smell, I began my mad experiments with this stupid cleric that tried to escape. You know, the more days pass, the worse this compound looks. Sometime during this 100 days, we will actually build us a house over the ocean, and it's going to be beautiful. I cured my two villagers, then left them to be infected again. Each villager needs to be infected about six times each. Also, I decided to fix up my personal house guard since I was kind of tired of looking at this crumbling husk of a former self that he had become. 
He needs to work on himself. He has issues. On day 113, I infected my mans again. And then I went to the local neighborhood lava pool for some lava. Fun fact, this is where all the orphans like to hang out. It was a good thing that I renamed my axe in honor of Technoblade. I spent the rest of the day cooking sand until I had almost a full shulker full of white stained glass. Then these flying demons tried to get me, but they were scared of my security guard. I cured my villagers a third time and went to sleep. On day 114, things were looking good. I only cured this man three times and his rotten flesh was already down to seven per emerald. I spent the day mining stone for the blaze farm. Insert epic time lapse here. Then I cure these boys a fourth time. I'm going to need more apples. Then we had done it. One rotten flesh per one emerald. Also a huge source of XP. We had our first efficient villager. We were one step closer to infinite stunks. On days 115 through 116 for the meme, I decided to make a diamond hoe. Also because I needed apples. Then the enchantment table had me looking like a clown. I went back to my cleric for some more capitalism. Look at that, 16 juicy emeralds, plus a bunch of XP. The plan's all coming together. I spent all of day 116 killing trees for their apples and wood. It was a win-win-win, because eventually I was going to need to light up all this land for my creeper farm to work better at night. Oh yeah, and this golem decided to show off the reason why I added a guard around my zombies. Imagine if I was still out cutting trees and this man killed my zombie villager who had been cured five times, I'd have to make an iron golem farm for vengeance even sooner than I had planned. On days 117 through 118, I was looking like a baller with my 28 golden apples. Then I decided to cure this man again one more time and he shall be my Fletcher who trades for sticks, feathers, and string. Do you smell the stonks? Maybe it's just me. I should probably shower. Next I harvested my sugar cane. Then I harvested my wheat. You know, I really can't wait until I start automating things around here. Then I fed my prisoners. They could provide me with more future orphans. Don't look at me like that. Yes, I know, I need an auto breeder. I will get to it. On day 118, I finally gave my cured boy a Fletcher roll and he has one stick per emerald trades. It was all coming together. With my crazy stonks, I decided to give E-Girl Eliminator the final upgrade she needed with Sharpness 5. I also gave Orphan Obliterator Sharpness 5. Good old Orphan Obliterator. On day 119, I spent the whole day laying out the foundation for my double blaze farm. The spawners were in kind of a weird spot, so I couldn't really stop the blazes from spawning, and they made this whole process take twice as long. On day 120, I came back with glowstone and made it so they would leave me alone. Please. I couldn't even think for 10 seconds without a blaze smacking me or shooting a fireball at me. On day 121, I began making the spawn chambers for the blazes and things were going pretty well. The white stained glass idea I got from Filza because he made a cool blaze farm in his hardcore world. On day 122 I ran out of stone bricks so I went home and I made a cool compact stone generator that I found online. This design is super efficient, it's AFKable, and I can choose to make cobble or stone. I spent the whole day getting tons of stone. On days 123 through 124 I continued building the blaze chamber. I have really good feelings about this farm, but I ended up running out of stone again, so it was back to the stone generator. On day 124, I finished the top portion of the farm, and this stupid ghast tried to yoink my spawner. Like a jerk. Anyways, look at this blaze getting pushed by the lava. The farm is working like a charm already. On day 125, I was almost done with the blaze farm, and this is going to be insane. This many blaze? spawns just from one spawner. I had to go inside to increase the size of the kill chamber because there was just too many blaze. Just look at how crazy this farm is. But I'm out of stone again so I need to go get more. On day 126 I killed a drowned and he dropped a trident. Finally. And then this guy somehow broke his boat and escaped. Maybe the trident drowned was attacking the villager and hit the boat. 
I don't know. On days 127 through 128, I realized that the whole time my Silk Touch pick was missing on Breaking 3, and I ended up not having enough XP to add it yet. After that, I went back to the Nether to continue working on the Blaze Farm. The next day, I finished the Kill Chambers, and I decided to make two Kill Chambers since the first design that moved all of the Blazes from one spawner to the second was super inefficient. For now, I was finished working on the spawner. In the future, I'll probably make this room look nicer. For now, it is just a working XP farm, so I can go ahead and mend all my stuff. I mean, after all, I'm working on villagers anyways, so I'll probably be getting most of my XP from them. Either way, we checked off another thing on the to-do list. On day 129, I returned home from the nether with just a couple of blaze rods, nothing huge. And since it was cheaper just to combine two picks that I had gotten from end cities rather than add Unbreaking 3 to my original pick, I did just that and I made it netherite. We would need multiple picks for future projects anyways, so no big deal. I started day 130 with some beautiful capitalism. And then I was forced into a brutal staring contest with Jeff, my stolen alpaca. I won, of course. Then I enchanted my new trident and rightfully named it the Yeet Stick. Then I took my Yeet Stick for a good yeeting around the ocean. Then I spent a good portion of the day killing trees, and I gave my shield mending and unbreaking, and I rightfully named it Double Wide Surprise. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm referencing with this name. On day 131, I flew over to my local dark oak forest to yoink some wood for my new base of operations, and then... I began building the framework. This new house was going to be big. On day 132, I went back to work on the new base. This is going to take a long time. By the end of the day, I had finished the front of the frame. On days 133 through 134, I continued expanding my new base and I finished laying out one of two of the crazy chest rooms. I could truly be at home with my perfect OCD storage finally. On days 135 through 136, I needed more wood, so it was back to deforestation. I chopped so many trees during these two days. For days 137 all the way through 146, I spent these working on my house, reorganizing my loot, and just making everything look nice. This base is going to be a hoarder's dream. I had to slaughter some cows for their skin, rip to all the cows that died for this heavenly organization. It was a ton of work, but my chest areas are done, and I still don't have a roof. On day 147, I started making pillars so the base looked less, uh, ridiculous, and it wasn't just, like, floating magically above the water. I made a new netherite god shovel and rightfully called it the Domination Digger. Also, just look at the beginning of this base. Isn't it beautiful? On day 148, I built a nice bridge to get to the front door. And then I noticed my two villagers were dead. Yay. Then I bought some nice lanterns from my mending boy here, because I was trying to save iron until I actually did make the iron golem farm. And that was what those two spare villagers were for. Now I, I need more again. Thank you, whatever killed them. On day 149, I spent the whole day lighting and cleaning up the mainland. Then I decided to start my mob prison camp, which is a future goal for a future 100 days. Why collecting this baby zombie chicken rider? Got a name tag and I named him Mick Chicken. On day 150, lighting was still going well. After fully lighting all the land around me, I can build a creeper slash spider farm and I can have infinite fireworks and more cheap emerald trades with string. On day 151, I realized I was out of coal for torches. However, I didn't really feel like going strip mining. So I flew around to find some exposed coal and caves. Then I witnessed the miracle of life with bees. I waited until one would go into the nest and the other would leave and then I stole it. I'm collecting bees for a future honey farm project. On day 152, I continued hunting for coal in the wild, and I spent the night lighting up more areas by my base. Then I went to check out our baby zombie McChicken, and the chicken despawned. Why did that even happen? Do I, did I have to name both? It's, it's a passive mob. Passive mobs don't despawn. Maybe this one counted as a hostile mob because a zombie was riding it? I don't know. But 
McChicken was no longer a McChicken. He was just a stupid Vilza zombie. On day 153, I fed my boys so they'd make more villagers. We need to make more villagers to infect for our empire of emeralds. I spent the rest of my day organizing all of my excessive amount of resources. And honestly, my chest room was looking was looking absolutely beautiful. I was so happy with how this turned out. On day 154, I decided to upgrade my apple harvesting hoe with mending, and I even named it after the biggest hoe that I know. Worth it. After naming it, I decided to make it into netherite. This accomplishment was so great that even the game showered me with meaningless applause. Then I found a free gold villager, and in the process of trying to trap him in a boat, these two mans trolled me by both stealing my boats. Joke's on them because their new gold friend was going to spend the rest of his life as a villager forced into trading. For each boat that was stolen, I expect him to pay me back 1 million emeralds each. On day 155, I changed my wheat farm to carrots because wheat was honestly significantly less efficient and I filled it with villagers so I could speed up my villager rating. On day 156, I finished building the porch area around my house, and what can I say, this place was looking absolutely fantastic. Like, I was very, very happy with how my house was turning out. This was gonna be so nice. On days 157 through 161, I finished up my roof, and what can I say? I'm pretty happy. Typically, roofs are the hardest part of any build for me, and that's why I always save them for last, because any little change to the underneath structure of a house, and all of a sudden you have to change all of the roof. And I was not doing that, especially for a base this big, but I think it turned out really great. It's kind of Kind of an odd roof, I'll give you that, but it looks nice, and it finally covers me up, and that checks off the stop being homeless task from the to-do list. This house is super comfortable, and I have officially moved from the compound onto better things. On day 162, I went to go do some capitalism with the boys. Just look at these dank stonks. I then spent the rest of the day placing lanterns everywhere to kind of light up the area and make it look nicer, and I made some paintings. This place is really starting to come together. It looks so nice. On day 163, I had the pleasure of going back and trying to fix these stupid pillars underneath my house. Somehow, I messed them up and my OCD is dying. Sometimes OCD is a gift, sometimes OCD is a curse. This time, it's a curse. Please, somebody help me. On day 164, I went around and I continued lighting up my compound, so that way, my new creeper farm would be super efficient, even at nighttime. The only good amount of torches is too many torches. Then, I seized the moment and I scammed this stupid skeleton out of giving me a music disc. The creeper never saw it coming. I spent all of day 165 upgrading my villager breeder. I mean... I know it's kind of a mess, but that's okay. They can live in poverty. At least this way, I didn't have to make an infinite village breeder. I don't really need infinite villagers, so I don't want to have to go through all the effort to build an infinite breeder. This is okay. This works. Now we can start producing more villagers to make into traders and infect, and I could also get more villagers for my future iron farm. On day 166, the villager baby maker was in full production, and we were making lots of villagers so we could soon work on our iron farm. Then I spent the whole night working on these cool bridges in front of my new house. I was going to have one bridge that goes back to the compound, one bridge that goes to the house, uh, one bridge that goes to the mainland, and then probably a fourth bridge that will lead over to our future villager like outpost trading area that I'm going to make probably in 300 days. On day 167, I had so many volunteers for my new iron farm. Then I continued working on the bridges. Things were looking really nice. Now I could finally stop wasting rockets every time I wanted to avoid swimming back to the compound from my new base. On day 168, I lit up my front porch with these beautiful lanterns so I could say goodbye to these disgusting torch plebs. Then I spent the rest of my day gathering supplies for the new creeper farm. On day 169, nice. I found this scam artist just chilling under my house and I went to go kill him, but I realized he had watermelon seeds. I actually haven't found watermelon in this world yet, so I went to go get some emeralds and I came back and bought some seeds from him. And then I committed cold-blooded murder 
underneath my house where no one would find the body. After committing crimes against wandering traders, I began building my new creeper farm, and it was going pretty well. I had laid out the killing chamber, and I already had the collection chamber all ready to go. On days 170 through 172, I continued working on the creeper farm until I ran out of wood for trapdoors. I spent days 173 through 175 making 10 additional layers to spawn creepers on, and look at this thing go. It's already spawning stuff, and I haven't even finished encasing it and making it dark yet. I am one step closer to having infinite fireworks. And then somehow this zombie with the sword got into my mending villager's house and I had to cure him. I have no clue how he got in there, but why did it have to be the mending villager? Either way, his trade value would probably go down, so I guess it was a win-win? On day 176, I continued working on my creeper farm. And then I went back to go check on my mending friend, and he was freaking gone! He was gone! Literally, the most important villager got infected, and I'm, I'm pretty sure some iron golem walked by and just killed him after I cured him. I cannot wait to make an iron golem farm and hear the sound of them melting in lava. Anyways, look, look at how many new villagers we have. Yay! On days 177 through 179, I finished closing up the creeper farm and it was good to go. Now, the entirety of the farm was dark, so even during the daytime, lots of creepers and spiders will spawn, and I can farm them for their gunpowder, and I can get the spider string and sell it to the scam artists for emeralds. This farm isn't the nicest thing on the outside, but I do plan on eventually building like a giant creeper structure on the outside of it and it's going to have like a block of TNT on its head. So it's like a giant creeper with a block of TNT on top. It's going to look amazing, but that means I have to start building up a ton of sheep, get colored sheep farms, and try to make an auto shearer. Maybe I'll do all that in 300 days. Typically for a creeper farm, you would want to build a box up in the sky, so that way none of the caves underneath were loaded in, and you'd have the best spawns. However, I'm not really trying to AFK this world since we are recording every day, so... I went back around and continued lighting up more chunks, and I will continue finding caves in the future, so that way it'll work as efficiently as possible 24-7. Anyways, look at all the stuff we've already gotten. It's only been about two minutes since I've walked to my base and back, and we've already got all this loot. So we will have no problems with having infinite fireworks after I make a sugarcane farm. On day 180, I went caving near my base to light up some underground areas, and I found this super cool underground abandoned portal, like, right near my base. Honestly, this cave is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. I absolutely love 1.16 terrain generation, and I am super excited for Minecraft 1.17 with the new caves and cliffs update. On day 181, I checked on my pile of new villagers, and then I partook in some more capitalism. Then I went on a quest for bamboo with my elytra, so that way I can make a new stick farm and trade mad sticks for mad stonks. However, I was not having much luck with finding a jungle or any bamboo. However, I did find an abandoned portal and I got me a nice block of gold that the lava then stole. And then I found this messed up village, so I robbed them. On day 182, I found another portal and I decided to grab some crying obsidian. I mean, I don't know, I might use it eventually. And then I found another village and I stole from them. And then I found a third village and I stole from them. I'm beginning to realize that I'm a lot like Santa, except I rob you. On day 183, I found an ice biome, which is super cool because I could always use this in the future. So you know I had to steal tons of ice. I could use it for anything. I could go to the roof of the nether and make a nice ice path, or I could just, you know, be an adult and use an elytra, but you know, whatever. I had ice now, so I could use it for anything I wanted. Also, Efficiency 5, Icebreaking, is one of the most satisfying things you will ever do in Minecraft. Then, I found a sunken ship with a buried treasure map. On day 184, I found an Illager Tower that conveniently was right next to a village, so I started killing lots of Illagers in the hopes of finding a captain and getting a curse. Today was going to be the day that we tried our first raid and hopefully we can come out of it with some Totems of Undying. Then I spent the rest of the daylight fighting this raid, and let me tell you, this was one of the most intense moments I've ever had in Minecraft. I know it was just a baby raid, but I have never done a hardcore raid before, let alone played in hardcore. This is actually 
my first ever hardcore world. So this raid was a, a very new thing to me, and it was very, very scary. These guys, even though I had full netherite, they hit tons of damage. Vindicators, very scary. Vex, your worst nightmare, honestly. I also wasn't paying very much attention to the village, so a lot of the villagers died, and I think... I lost my iron golem to a couple of ravengers. Honestly, doing this raid without beacons really, really hurt. So I was thinking maybe if I built another portal here, then I can use the nether to travel back, make some beacons, and in the future, this can be our own little farm for raids. We could farm raids here. Maybe we can make a raid area in 300 days. And I did get my first totem of undying from this raid, so it was definitely a successful day. On day 185, I decided to make another portal just to see where it would end up, see if there's anything interesting, and to see how difficult it was going to be to get back to our original nether location from here, since we were actually 15,000 blocks away in the overworld. Unfortunately though, I did not have a spare lodestone or compass, so I did not head home through the nether, and later that day I just flew home the old-fashioned way. It took an unbearable amount of time. On day 186, I spent the whole day clearing out trees in the village near the outpost, and then I realized that I'm, I'm pretty sure all the villagers are dead now. So I went to get another raid buff to test it, and I was, I was kind of nervous because I had a level 3 raid buff now, and I don't know if I could handle that, but I went back to the village and yeah, all, all my villagers were dead. I, because I stood on the roof so long, I, I let all of them die, so this village was no longer useful to me. On day 187 through day 189, I found another village that was right next to the outpost. Like, it was actually closer than the first village where we had done the raid. And upon stepping in there, I started a level 3 raid. Now this raid was, was really, really scary. I thought the last raid was bad. This one was terrifying. The Vex would not stop spawning. I actually ended up running out of food while I was out there. I, chicken doesn't have much saturation, so I was already struggling. I actually ended up just kind of running away, and I spent the whole night flying home with my elytra, and I, I didn't have any food. But on the way home, I found two of my favorite types of villages, which is pretty cool. On day 189, I had struck literal gold. I was out exploring, and I found an illager outpost that was way closer to my house. I also had to stop here because I actually had just run out of fireworks. I literally ended up using my last firework to get home to my house. On day 190, I didn't really do much. I was just AFKing around my base and I decided to add Unbreaking 3 to He Who Yeats and then I fixed him up. Then I spent the rest of my day and night just lighting up more caves around the base so that way my creeper farm would be as efficient as possible without me AFKing in a skybox. On days 191 through 192, I wasted so much time by gathering villagers for my iron farm. And I even managed to get a zombie. The zombie was pretty easy. He just kind of walked on up and I was like, you know what? This is an opportunity. I spent days 193 through 194 building the top of the farm. This was going to look good because I finally could use all of the new nether blocks for something since the the blackstone is beautiful but it does not work at all with my kind of like spruce wood and stone brick house so I couldn't really incorporate it in any way and I'm glad I finally got to use it. On day 195 I wasted the entire day by filling the farm with villagers. I was going to need 20 villagers for this iron farm. I needed 5 for each chamber on the side, so that way there was maximum scare factor for the, the villagers, so that way we can get as many iron golems to spawn as often as we can have them spawn. I was not playing around. Just look, I haven't even added a zombie and there was already a golem. You know, I just want to throw this in there. These villagers gave me so many problems that I cannot wait to exploit them for their labor in 300 days. Getting these jerks to cooperate took all the way until day 197. On days 198 through 199, I finished out the iron farm. I named my zombie 1 million villagers as a reference to Destiny's original loot cave. A million deaths is not enough for Master Raul. And I pushed him up to the top and into the cart. This man's was gonna be working for me forever for free. He's gonna spin around, scare the villagers, 
The villagers will talk to each other, and they'll scare each other even more, which will increase the spawn of iron golems. And I set up an auto sorter and composter underneath. And honestly, just, just look at how great this is. This is my first ever iron farm. There's a lot of firsts in this world. The auto sorter allows me to have all of the flowers go into the composter and turn them into bone meal, and then all the iron goes into the other chest, and in the 10 minutes it took me to set up the kill chamber, I've already made this much iron. And now that I finally have an iron farm, that is the last task on my to-do list for 200 days, which means you are now legally obligated to drop a like. Or maybe one day a group of aliens will come down and they'll make a human farm just like this iron golem farm and we might end up in it. You wouldn't want that to happen now, would you? So for day 200, I wanted to give you guys a personal tour of my base and kind of what I've made so far. So this is the last day and I just wanted to make sure you guys got to see every little part of the house because I put a lot of work into this house throughout the series and it is, it is coming along so beautifully. So first off over here, we have our nice little auto smelter area. We've got two regular furnace spots. We have two blast furnace. And we have a regular smoker, so that way I can cook any food we want. Um, these are kind of temporary, probably going to play around with this area. Same goes for like this area, it's a little empty. Uh, if we come over here, we have those beautiful paintings that I said I made. Uh, we've got these chests, which are for ingredients, for our potions, etc. We have our cool enchanting area, and a chest for more lapis, so it's easier to access. I really enjoy the roof that I did with all the like glass. It's... It's really unique. I've never made a build like this, and I've never seen someone make a build like this. Plus, you can see the creeper farm, and you can even see the iron golem farm if you head over here. You can, like, see it just chilling over there. It looks really cool. Plus, this in the future is going to have, you know, the giant creeper, the giant TNT block, etc. Uh, this spot right here, probably going to change. This spot right here does not normally have the shulkers. They're just from when I went on those trips with the elytra. And then I have two beds here for OCD reasons, and... I don't really need a bedroom. I've never been a person to make a bedroom in Minecraft. Anyways, when it comes to our storage, we've got our like mob drop area here for all kinds of mob loot. We got our potion of um, XP. We've got name tags, bees, uh, some spare chests here for extra storage. We've got our potions. I'm going to have tons of totems of undying in the future. So I've made lots of chests. Uh, we've got saddles. I've got horse armor. We've got discs, including an entire chest just for the beautiful pig step. Um, we've got over here different types of blocks, a little bit of empty spots here. Uh, we've got dirt, grass, sand, we got stone bricks, stone, cobblestone. I'm actually missing two types of wood here. I'm missing jungle wood and I'm missing uh, acacia, I think. And then we're going to have the full section of each type of wood here. So saplings, planks, and you know, like miscellaneous stuff. Uh, and then two chests for the actual wood. And then over here, we've got netherite diamonds, emerald, all of our rare stuff, uh, each chest for different types of equipment, so that way when I go end city farming, we have spots for that. Uh, lots of different miscellaneous stuff here, like TNT, buckets, beds, banners, uh, we got shulkers, rails, etc. This is going to be an elytra chest. We've got lots for sugarcane, lots for different types of crops, and fish, and food. And then we're going to have four chests over here for, like, different colors of wool. Over here, we've got our nether section with all kinds of different nether blocks, including the woods, which I really want to build stuff with the wood in the future. I haven't made anything with it yet. I want to get really creative in this world. And then we have lots of spare spots here for other nether stuff and honestly, whatever else I feel fit. Um, and then we're going to have a bunch of enchanted book chests for when I get more enchanted books, we can organize those. It's going to be super cool. On the outside of the house, I built like this, uh, it's not entirely finished, there's a few spots here, but... I built this entire deck area that's really nice, that goes all the way around the house, really happy with it, and I'm going to put lanterns all around it eventually, so I don't have to have these torches here. And then you can kind of see the iron farm. I didn't have enough time to finish the actual chest room, but look at that. Look at that. There's an iron golem. Look at that. Also, I did show this off a few times throughout the, three, throughout the 200 days. Over there, there is a guardian farm area, so in the future, we can definitely do a guardian farm. And then we have our little, like, walkways out here. Gonna do more work on them. There's gonna be more stuff in between here. I wanna do, like, a lot of decorating in 300 days. This is the kind of, like, bridge area in the front porch. Most of these lanterns are actually good, so I did get rid of all the gross, icky torches, you know. We have our really nice bridges, which, honestly, I never used to build bridges like this. I'm really proud of these bridges. They're pretty nice. 
And then we have this area over here, which will probably lead off into a, a new villager area, which I'm looking forward to. And then we have an area that will probably go to the mainland. And then we just have our compound over here, which honestly, I don't want to talk about it. It's a real mess, especially after moving the villagers throughout the 200 days. Like if you look over here, it is, uh, it, it is not pretty. L look at all. This is what it took to move these mans. This is what it took. It was not fun. Anyways, this is how the base looks, and this is how I've spent day 200. On day 201, I was cleaning out my shulkers when I found this cat randomly in my base. I have no clue how he got here since there were no villagers, but this man must have made the great journey from my horrendous compound. Then I watched these iron golems get smelted into ingots. Is it sadistic that I put the iron farm there so I could watch them die outside my window? No? I didn't think so either. Then I found another cat in my house and the realization set in. Since the iron farm was so close to my house, my house was now a village. Well, I guess I have a free cat farm, I guess. After getting my cats, I went to check on my old chicken farm. I added more chests so that way I could keep more eggs. My new chicken farm would be for feathers. However, this one was still going to be there for eggs. So that way, when I killed withers, I could farm wither roses for future wither skeleton farm. Then, in celebration of 300 days, I did more sweet, sweet capitalism so I could mend my elytra. I only have one of these so far, so I do have to be careful. On day 202, I kind of just stood around debating on which project I should start first. Then I decided to finish lighting up the forest behind my creeper farm. After that, I had this insane piece of inspiration. I wanted to make a bonsai tree to kind of fill in some of the gaps in like the water area. I did say in 200 days, I wanted to make everything look super OCD pleasing. So I flew over to the dark oak forest to begin getting some leaves. I'm not sure if I'm going to use dark oak, spruce, or both. Either way, my base is really starting to look good at night. I spent day 203 working on this cool bonsai tree. Then while I was out getting wood for the tree, I tried to take this beehive, but I messed up and I had to kill the bees. I'm sorry, bees. I continued working on the tree throughout the night. On day 204, I finished making the bonsai tree, and honestly, I'm super proud of it because I didn't really have much of a plan going into it. All of the branches and leaves are freeform, and I added lanterns to the tree and replaced the dirt with podzel. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed that I started 300 days building a tree. Later that night, I decided to do a big boy task. I need to begin hunting wither skeletons for their skulls. So I made a lodestone and a compass for the nether so I could easily explore and try to find another nether fortress. After going through the portal, a freaking creeper blew up the portal. How the hell did he even end up getting down here? While out exploring, I found another nether fortress, so I went hunting for some decapitation. And this fortress was pretty terrible. While inside the nether fortress, I did what I like to call a pro gamer move and I hit a piglin by accident, and I had to fight for my life. On day 205, I continued hunting around the fortress. I need to make another nether portal here so that way I can come back. I even committed several taboos by breaking two blaze spawners. Eventually, this is going to become my wither skeleton farm. Well, here I found one of the greatest mobs I've ever seen in Minecraft, a piglin McChicken. I spent the whole day expanding the spawnable nether fortress area for wither skeletons while trying to get heads. Now that I was expanding the fortress, the skeleton spawns really started popping up, and I even got one wither skeleton skull. On day 206, I decided that I was going to go for a smaller sized wither skeleton farm, so I would need to destroy most of the spawnable blocks and put slabs on the rest. So I went looking for a broken portal so that way I could find some obsidian and find my way back here in the future. I found this portal right by the fortress that conveniently had 10 obsidian. I went back to the fortress to light a portal and I flew home in the overworld. On the way home I stopped by for some acacia wood because it was one of the only two woods I was missing for my OCD organization. On day 207 I continued flying home. Yeah, the Portal was way too far in the overworld, but when I got home, I was greeted by my beautiful new bonsai tree. Man, that bonsai tree turned out so much better than I thought it would. Then I added my acacia items to their frames in case I ever decided to use this ugly wood, which I probably won't, but it still filled up the gaps, so GG. On days 208 through 209, I collected items that I was going to need for the nether. My plan was to dig a tunnel and make pathways that led to the wither skeleton farm, and maybe in the future I could add a minecart or some packed ice or sand for soul speed. I don't know. I grabbed a ton of stone brick for the tunnels and bottles of XP so that I could repair my pickaxes. Now that projects were getting bigger, I was going to need more netherite 
so I can make more tools. Luckily, I already had this tunnel going in the correct way towards the fortress. You know, the tunnel where the piglins almost killed me in 100 days. Yeah, let's see them try now. I needed to move about 500 blocks on the x-axis and then negative 1700 blocks on the Z. And I knew there were parts where I was gonna have to bridge across lava. This was not going to be fun. After finishing the x-axis, I realized just how long a full 1700 block tunnel was going to be. So I had a better idea. Instead of tunneling all the way to this other nether fortress, I could just make the nether fortress with the double blaze farm into a wither skeleton farm as well. This way, it was way closer, and I could farm multiple things at once. Besides, I could still use this other tunnel for portal hopping in the future. On day 210, I started outlining the bounding box of the nether fortress, and this is one of the smallest fortresses that I've ever seen, but that's good. In order to make this work, I would have to dig out a ton of netherrack and clear some crimson forest, but luckily, I do have my blaze farm to continue repairing my picks. I started off by decimating this crimson forest. I mean, no big loss here, let's be honest. But first, I had to repair your mother. She seems pretty damaged and I forgot to give her efficiency. Why must she make my life hard? So I flew back to my base and gave her efficiency. But I had to enchant a book the old fashioned way because I didn't have a villager with efficiency 5. I also had to settle for 4. Ew. Icky. Gross. I know. But either way, this was going to make my life so much easier. Upon returning to the nether fortress, I found another wither skull. 16 more to go for a tier 4 beacon. After realizing how much work it was going to be, I had a better idea. I'm an American, and there are two things that Americans love. Those are capitalism and explosions. I was going to get tons of sand and make a metric ton of TNT to blow up the nether around my fortress. On day 211, I started the day by AFKing to repair my tools with the blaze spawner, and, uh, wow, my trade monkeys have been reproducing. Then, instead of getting sand, I spent the whole day running around like an orphan about to be obliterated searching for my red shulker box. It has my fortune pick and my new netherite shovel in it, and I thought that I didn't pick it up in the nether, because my inventory was full, so it despawned. Turns out I'm an idiot and I left it in my house by my enchantment table. I finished off the night with lots of capitalism to repair my shovel, and for some reason my Fletcher is literally broken. He won't sleep, so I let him out, and he wants this already claimed bed. Honestly, this is why villagers deserve to be exploited. On day 212, I flew a couple hundred blocks from my house to get some sand, and I found a super close turtle. So I trapped him. I'm gonna need turtle eggs for several farms in the future. Also, it wouldn't be a 100 days video without a dream digging montage. Oh, also, I didn't break my shovel this time. In the 200 days video, a couple of you did comment on how my shovel was still in my inventory. That was because I didn't have any footage from after the shovel broke. I noticed it in my notes, and there's nothing I can really do about it because I didn't have the footage of the shovel breaking, so stop telling me about it in the comments. Then I went home to check on my auto farms, and it feels so, so good to basically be printing counterfeit iron. I got together my gunpowder and made three stacks of TNT, which... Isn't that bad, to be honest. I've been in the wither a lot, so these farms haven't been running. I really need to light up every cave under my house, though, because I'm going to need a lot of TNT in the future. On days 213 through 220, I began blowing up the nether with TNT. My goal was to clear out most of the fortress area and just cover the ground underneath in lava or slabs or something. Also, while blowing up the ground, I accidentally angered a zombie Technoblade army. However, killing these boys really has me excited to make a gold farm in the future. And hey, while blowing up stuff, I found an ancient debris. Things were going well, I was only halfway done clearing and I had already found three ancient debris. Then I killed a skeleton and I got the third wither skeleton skull that I would need to summon my first wither. The more areas I spawn proof, the more predictable the wither skeleton spawns are becoming. Towards the end of this project, I realized that most of what people online say about wither farms is definitely wrong. They do not spawn on anything but nether brick. Oh yeah, and this happened. I got a wither skull drop and this piglin, uh, 
stole it and he's wearing it. Anyways, I had to take that back from him, so sorry Piglin buddy. Overall, the process of spawn proofing in the nether is truly awful. It took forever and this area is still not really that spawn proof. At least we can go summon two withers and check off one task from our to-do list. On day 221, it was time to kill two withers. I spent the beginning of the day organizing my inventory with potions, so I was ready to fight the withers. I'm gonna bring so many chicken eggs so I can get so many wither roses. Just look at this totally healthy number of shulkers full of chicken eggs. I dug up to the roof of the nether so that way the withers couldn't do much damage against me, and I began filling this hole with an insane amount of chickens. This took almost the whole day. There are literally hundreds of chickens chickens in this pit. I ate some roasted chicken in front of the sacrifices before summoning the wither. Overall, the fight went pretty well, even though I let the chickens out and the wither almost got out as well. My armor was so stacked that he basically did nothing against me. Anyways, I thought you guys would want to see this, so here is the wither fight with some epic music. After killing the wither, just look at all of the wither roses. I got six and a half stacks of roses. I replaced the floor with obsidian to make my life easier and I killed a second wither. And just like that, I checked off killing a wither from my to-do list. These will not be the last we kill during these 100 days. On day 222, I went back to try to farm wither skeletons. Some were spawning, but it was way less than normal. Ultimately, I think I wasted almost 10 days because both the blaze farm and the crimson forest ruined the wither spawns. Also during this time, I didn't know this, but you should never try to make a wither skeleton farm inside of any other biome besides just lava or nether wastes because the spawns of piglin will absolutely ruin the farm and there is almost no way to fully spawn proof the area. There will always be something spawning and taking up your wither skeleton spawns. On day 223, I decided to fly back to the other nether fortress to farm some more wither skeletons. And on the way there, I found this really easy bastion that I could rob. It was like taking candy from orphans. Ended up getting 16 blocks of gold. Let's go. Then I found a new fortress that was in a warped forest. I spent about 10 minutes here and I got one skull. This fortress honestly super sucked, so I kind of just left. After getting back to the original wither farm fortress, I hung out there for a little and I got another skull. Honestly, at this point, I was done with the nether and I really wanted to work on the compound and make a huge villager trading hall, so I just flew back to my portal with the flight of shame. I'm super disappointed that the wither farm is still not functional. On day 224, I forgot to record, but I literally spent the whole day AFK mining stone for our villager project while I ate a massive bowl of cereal in real life. Don't judge me. On day 225, I began gathering resources for my new massive villager trading hall. This building was going to to be larger than my house. But first, I made a portable beacon so that my deforestation would be far, far easier. And I screwed it up. I kind of screwed up the beacon, but I still got haste too. And I did realize how nice iron and emerald blocks do look together. After getting tons of wood, I tore down my beacon and I went back home. On day 226, I rebuilt the level 2 haste beacon in my compound and I spent most of my day harvesting spruce wood, which was the last thing I needed for the new villager hall. On day 227, I I began planning the villager trading post in my head and it was gonna be amazing. We were going to make more stonks than Luke the Notable. This trading post is gonna have two levels and the bottom will have a multitude of different villager type sections and the top will be dedicated to all the enchantment traders and maybe some weapon and toolsmiths. On day 228, I continued building the foundation for the trading post and I made this awesome bridge to it. On days 229 through 231, I continued working on the floor for the trading area and then I came to the realization that this building was going to be way too big. The design I had in mind would fit over 144 villagers, which is kind of too many to keep up with. So I decided to half the size of it so that way it would just be 72 villagers. I plan on having a section for each type of villager. I could have 9 Fletchers which could trade for 48 emeralds every time I trade with them. If I traded with all 9, then they would produce 432 emeralds at a time, which is 48 blocks. I'm going to swim in emeralds. I changed the design and I continued working. 
until I was interrupted by this public execution. Stupid trader. On day 232, I continued working on the bottom floor of the trading hall, and things were looking great. I finally got to use chiseled blackstone, which is such a nice block, and I used emerald blocks for the not-so-casual flex. And I spent the night making a platform to infect villagers on, and a path to minecart new villagers over to the new trading hall. On day 233, I built the railway so I could begin kidnapping the members of this huge family that I started. Spent most of the daylight moving these jerks to the infection chamber. You know, the more I move these mans, the more I really have come to despise them. They deserve their fate. Then I spent the rest of the night luring this horde of zombies over so they could torture my villagers, and that went pretty well. On days 234 through 235, I started the day by curing my first four zombie villagers, and I started working on the second floor of the trading hall, and I continued curing my villagers over and over and over again. Their fates are in my hands now. On day 236, I cured my villagers for the sixth time and tested to see if any villagers had a trade of one sticks. Then I killed the zombies and began moving them into their tiny new homes. But I started hearing zombies again. A lot of zombies. And I have never ever seen a horde this large spawn. Like what was going on? Even the damn creepers were conspiring. And they even reinfected some of my villagers. Luckily, a zombie got stuck in the boat of the villager that I haven't infected yet, so I guess... You know what? I guess it works. It's fine. It's okay. On day 237, I went to work on the back porch area of the building. I didn't really need it, but if I didn't add it, the building would look kind of weird, so you know what? Why not? Then I waited until nighttime so the trade monkeys would actually cooperate and get into their holes. I, I mean homes their homes. The first guy was such a jerk and he wouldn't go into the hole. I think it was because of this block above the bed. I broke it and he went right in. Go figure. Luckily, the second villager was super easy. Then I spent the rest of the night finishing the walls for the second floor. On day 238, I went to do some beautiful capitalism and these mans were trying to ruin my day. One of my Fletchers just randomly had no discounts, so that really sucks. And then I accidentally punched this other man. I really hope my trades can make up for that. Anyways, I made 20 blocks of emerald right off the bat. This is going to be mad stonks. I shall become more rich than Luke the Notable. Then I noticed that this Fletcher was actually discounted and being the idiot that I am, I decided to trade with him instead of just waiting for him to reroll. Well, I guess I have crazy arrow trader now. Yay. On day 239, it was back to kidnapping villagers for profit. And two of my villagers were mad at me now because I <laughs> punched one and I might have killed an iron golem, not knowing that it affected my reputation. Then I cure these mans again in a very disorganized manner. These boys are literally driving me insane. Good news, everyone. These villagers aren't mad anymore. So it was time for some more sweet capitalism. On day 240, you will never guess what I did. I cured my villagers again. Then I commenced in some beautiful capitalism for 11 blocks of emeralds, which I then placed upstairs. Every one of these blocks represents another villager we will have up here in the future. This trading hall is looking absolutely stunning. I am very proud, and I'm actually thinking of not curing certain villagers to save on gapples and effort slash time. I probably won't cure any librarians for cheaper enchants. To be honest, I barely use them anyways. Then I finished up the remaining villager chambers up top. Now I had two options. I could either transfer all of my librarians from my compound first, or I could build the massive roof first. On day 241, I caught this iron golem trying to kill my infected trade monkeys, so I waterboarded him. And uh, he didn't take it so well. Guess my man is scared of the ocean. Then I cured the boys again, and I delivered my new Fletcher to his future home. And then you guessed it, more capitalism I must consume. I ended up with a juicy 12 emerald blocks. I went to collect the iron from my iron golem farm since I've been working from home lately, and look at these stacks. Six stacks and 13 iron. Then I showed my new stick boy to his room, and I cured my boys again. This time I killed the zombie. I'm 
Pretty sure I've cured them more than six times. Hopefully they don't reinfect each other. I spent the rest of the night placing redstone lamps in the floor and lighting them up. Finally, I can delete these gross torches everywhere. Nothing beats that feeling of walking through a new build and just admiring it. This is looking so good. On day 242, I don't know what happened because my power went out, which caused me to lose both my footage and my notes. Yay. On day 243, I went to go do some dank capitalism, and look at this absolute perfection. I made 25 emerald blocks and 8 emeralds from just sticks and string. Now that I have these boys, I really need to get on a bamboo and feather farm. And I need to light up my surroundings better so more spiders will spawn in the creeper and spider farm. After exploiting capitalism, I set out in the hopes of finding bamboo for a stick farm. This time, I went back towards world spawn. Then I found another, even closer illager outpost. I plan on using these in the future for a raid farm. I found a village super close, and I placed my spare lodestone so I could easily find it in the future and make another portal. I robbed them of their apples, wheat, and I was on my way. It was becoming nighttime, so I found a nice island along the way, and I watched the sunset from behind this ocean monument. Sometimes, you have to stop and smell the sunsets. Or, I, I think that's how that goes. On day two, 244, I woke up from my beautiful island nap and I continued flying. And yes, I finally found a jungle. Surprisingly, that didn't actually take that long. In the last 100 days, I flew about 15,000 blocks with no luck of a jungle. And honestly, this jungle was S tier. I found bamboo, I got jungle wood and jungle saplings to finish my wood collection. Something about that sounds off. Oh, oh, oh well. And I found cocoa beans and watermelons. All of these were things that I was missing. I found a bamboo field and collected about two shulkers full of bamboo. This bamboo farm that I was going to make is going to be huge. Oh, and uh, cue bamboo montage. On day 245, I stopped by a swamp so I can collect some lily pads. I have some cool ideas with these boys that I saw online. Then I flew home and wow, my base looks so good at night. I went around placing lily pads in the water around my house and I placed lanterns underneath them. This really makes the ocean look less dark and gross, especially at night. Maybe in the future I can get some coral and sea pickles and really add some color. On day 246, I was cleaning out my inventory and shulkers and then I heard a sound, a, a soundy sound that sounds disgusting. So I did what anyone else would do and flew to my roof and killed the man. Did you know that killing wandering traders counts as a tax write-off for emerald trades? Well, now you do. Then it was time for more capitalism. You're going to be seeing a lot of capitalism in the future. Then I led my only cleric to his section and gave him a bed. Hopefully me doing more trades and curing other villagers will fix his prices because he went up to seven flesh per emerald and that costs way too much. On day 247, I tested out using slabs under the trade block for each villager because I noticed a lot of the XP was getting stuck behind the job blocks. Later that night, I will probably replace the rest of these slabs too, even though it's a little weird seeing just the villagers' heads sometimes. I spent the rest of the day moving my librarians from the compound, which went surprisingly really well. I can finally clean up this huge mess that I call a compound. Also, there was a traffic jam on floor two. Awkward. My villagers fought me each step of the way, but I got all of them into their spots. Also, wow, these villagers are definitely reproducing faster than I can kidnap them. I spent day 248 cleaning up the compound so it was less of an, uh, eyesore. Honestly, now that I have all of this area empty, I really don't know what to do with it, but I do know that once I finish my villager trading hall, I'm probably gonna get rid of the villagers over here. I don't know how that's gonna go. I spent all of day 249 working on the roof of the trading hall. I worked through the night and finished the perimeter. On day 250, for some reason, I decided to catch this enderman. I mean, why not? He can go in the future mob zoo slash prison. Anyways, he shall be called Enderfriend. On day 251, I went to get more sand so I could fill the trading hall roof with some glass. One day, I need to really find a desert and set up a beacon so that way I can just go ham on some sand. While waiting for the glass to cook, I spent the night wasting XP on enchantments in the hopes of getting a couple enchantments that I need. I ended up getting jack and I wasted like 30 levels. On day 252, I began re-rolling librarian villagers to find the enchantments that I'm missing. I also need to get mending again because of the incident. After surprisingly not long, I got the first enchantment that 
what I wanted, which was Respiration 3. I should have added that to my armor so long ago, what is wrong with me? And then I learned that Smite affects your damage on the Wither, what? So I began farming for Smite 5, but I ended up getting Mending first, I mean, I, I guess that works. I added Respiration 3 to my helmet, and then I realized I also didn't have Unbreaking 3! What is wrong with me? This has probably costed me so much extra XP for mending this thing over the past 250 days. Then I kidnapped another man to continue farming for Smite. On day 253, I continued rolling for Smite 5, and I found a super cheap fire aspect too. You know what? I'll take it for my sword. I, I guess. I mean, why not? Also, no, I'm not adding knockback because that's honestly one of the most annoying enchantments to put on a sword. I kidnapped another man and continued re-rolling. This took all day with no luck until it was night and started raining, so my villagers stopped changing jobs. I went to go get glass so I could finish the roof and I realized my enderman was gone because of the rain! No! Rest in peace, ender friend. You will be missed. Then, while working on the roof, I witnessed this fight of a lifetime. The skeleton, normally one who is overpowered by an iron golem, had the range advantage. Oh, and the iron golem is down for the count! Eh, I, I had too many of them anyways. On day 254, I continued re-rolling for my boy here, and he gave me this awful trade for efficiency 4, which was kind of tempting since my axe only had efficiency 4, but I decided to pass up on it and I got a super cheap efficiency 5, which is kind of ironic, even though I now need efficiency 4 to upgrade my axe anyways. Facepalm. Anyways, it was back to kidnapping, then I rerolled this guy until it was night again. On day 255, I got Bane of Arthropods 5, which is disgusting, but you know what? Screw it, I still have that spider farm and I could use that for mad amounts of strings, so I'll pay this disgusting, awful 57 emerald price, I guess. I kidnapped another man and I finished up lighting on the ceiling. This place is looking insane, and come to think of it, it's kind of like a prison work camp. The iron golems are the wardens and each chamber is like a prison cell. I spent all of day 256 cleaning out the dump chest I had from building the giant trading hall. Nothing is quite more relaxing like some sweet, sweet organization. On day 257, I started the day with some good old fashioned capitalism. Just look at all these emeralds and all of this XP. I can almost hit level 30 just from trades. Now I need to infect farmers for infinite gold carrots and I need to automate some bamboo. While I'm at it, I should also automate a chicken and some carrot farms. I then spent the rest of the day destroying my original house. You will be missed. Kind of. Not really. I made a beacon to speed up expanding my land, and then I went to go construct the beacon, but this horde of zombies wouldn't leave me alone. Joke's on them. Their flesh is just emeralds to me. Everything is emeralds to me. Capitalism will consume my Minecraft world. On days 258 through 260, I set up an entirely emerald beacon for the flex and I continued clearing my land to expand my compound. No, my empire. I didn't actually add the beacon for the dirt because you can't dig dirt any faster than an efficiency 5 shovel. I did it for the beautiful stone. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is more satisfying than blowing through some stone with an efficiency 5 haste 2 pickaxe. I can also use the beacon to clear more trees. I need to make the forest safer, so I cleared out a ton of trees and I expanded the torch lighting out even further. Eventually, I will replace these gross torches with lamps. Probably prismarine lamps or glowstone, I don't know. On day 261, I began my day with some more beautiful capitalism. This is beyond amazing because the amount of trades by the time I get to the end, the Fletchers at the beginning, I've already refreshed their trades. This also literally prints XP. I used this dank XP to repair all of my tools and I made 46 blocks of emerald. I began planning for my massive bamboo farm and I found one online that was significantly more efficient than the one that I was actually planning. But I would need slime blocks to make a flying machine, which I don't have. So I had one of two choices. I could go to the swamps at night and try to get lucky or I could clear out my underground mining area with a beacon for super speed mining and probably find diamonds and 
find some slime chunks. Pretty sure you know what I wanted to do. So I dug straight down near my mine, just like any sane person would, and I set up my beacon. I spent days 262 through 265 setting up the underground beacon and speed mining out this giant area. You can actually see the individual chunk borders by pressing F3 and G. My goal is to clear out so many chunks, so that way I can find some slime chunks. Typically, one out of every 10 chunks is a slime chunk, and will spawn slimes. Luckily, with looting 3, I won't need as many slimes to spawn, so... Plus, just look at how cool it is down here. I decided to leave all of the exposed roof and floor ores for now. I'll probably come back and mine them later. Anyways, I already found diamonds. While mining, I kept hearing mobs, so I struggled to find a hidden cave, and... Uh... I found where all the endermen in my world were coming to place the dirt blocks that they've stolen from the surface, and, uh... This is honestly unsettling. But hey, anyways, I got one huge slime to spawn, which means one of these is a slime chunk. The problem is, you have to be like 30 blocks away from the spawn. Not gonna lie, I sat here in the corner eating Cheez-Its, waiting for them to spawn, and I got quite a few slimes to be honest. The slime chunk was taking too long, so I actually decided to fly to a swamp at night, and I found Jack. See, this is why we don't like swamps. Swamps icky. Swamps bad. On day 266, I went back down to the mine and just kept digging while killing whatever slimes would spawn. And I found one of the caves that was messing up my creeper spawner. And holy crap, look at all these mobs. Not gonna lie, I got very distracted with caving for the rest of the day. This is very good though because it will boost my creeper and spider farm spawns. Honestly, I was down here for all of day 267. This cave system was massive and now that it's lit up, my farm should work at least five times better. On day 268, I collected all of the ores that I had gotten from mining and look at all this loot. Beacon mining is really the way to go. I also ended up with 33 diamond ore, which I, of course, made into a throne for the pure flex. That is right, peasants. Bow before my throne of diamond ore. After breaking them all with Fortune 3, I ended up with a stack and seven diamonds, which I then added to my collection. Honestly, if you get mending early on, you really don't need diamonds anymore, so I will probably use them for flexing purposes in the future. Then I placed all of my redstone ore. And I ended up with a stack in 49 redstone blocks. Then I did the same with the coal, except it gets no speed run. Pathetic coal. I ended up with almost two stacks of coal blocks and about eight stacks of lapis. I also ended up with four stacks of iron and one stack of gold. Mining all these ores with fortune took literally the whole day. I added fire aspect to my sword and I guess I can't add Bane of Arthropods? I don't know, I haven't tried to put it on anything since like 2012. I went to check my now more efficient farms and I can already see the loot pouring in. I also got almost four stacks of iron from my iron golem farm. On day 269, nice, I went down to check on my slimes. Except I did literally what I worried I would do and I fell down the beacon hole instead of the ladder. I only took half health though and I did have a totem of undying so I guess it's all good. Then I did some juicy capitalism and got 44 more blocks of emerald. I have a cool idea for a new fence involving blackstone and emerald blocks and it's going to look absolutely fire. Then. I spent the rest of the day picking out a good spot to build my new bamboo farm. I spent days 270 through 274 setting up the bamboo farm and building the collection chamber. I decided to set this up the hard way, so I had to clear out the water for the collection chamber. This farm was super expensive to make, but eh, why not? I've got to flex somehow, right? I spent stacks on stacks of iron and gold to make all of these hoppers, minecarts, and rails. For this farm, I needed to make a flying machine. This was my first and only flying machine that I've ever made. And honestly, this thing was super cool. This farm generates tons of bamboo. Honestly, the production rate of this farm is kind of scary. I feel like I'm going to have too many sticks. All of the bamboo in these chests is literally from two in-game days of it running. Anyways, this bamboo farm ended up taking to day 200 and 77 to finish. Also, consider the bamboo farm off the to-do list done. On day 278, I went back to the nether so I could finish farming weather skulls and make my six tuple beacon. I ended up getting one weather skull, but then they stopped spawning. I flew above my farm to check the area I didn't finish spawn proofing and wow, there were never ending piglins. I tried killing them all, but they 
just kept spawning as fast as I could kill them. I sat up on this pillar killing for what felt like forever and yeah, they, they won't stop spawning. I could literally turn this into a gold farm here. Anyways, I couldn't kill them all fast enough and it was actually pretty scary. If I fell in, I would definitely die. Probably lose a totem of undying, die again, and lose all of my hard work. So I decided to bail and before I did, I ran by and joined to their loot. This was like a freaking zombie apocalypse. They would not leave me alone. I decided that I should just leave the nether so that way I can come back and spawn proof that area later. After that, my wither farm would probably work, hopefully. I spent days 279 through 286 in the nether with three shulkers full of stone bricks so that way I could continue slabbing the nether so these jerks would stop ruining my skull collection. I spent way too much time during this 100 days messing with the nether trying to spawn proof this area. I also didn't realize just how much nether I had to spawn proof. My wrists are so sore from all of the block placing, but things were already spawning way more efficiently. I even got two more Wither Skulls while checking to see if they were spawning. On days 287 through 289, it was back to spawn proofing. Now all I had to do was the fortress, and while placing nether brick slabs, I got another Wither Skull. Now I have eight, four more, and I could summon enough Withers to make six beacons. After finishing up the slabs, I went back to my base so I could get wither roses. With the wither roses, I could limit the spawns to just wither skeletons and hopefully this would work. And I screwed everything up. After spawn proofing everything, I can no longer get wither skeletons to spawn, even on the wither roses. I really should have found a fortress in a soul sand valley because almost no mobs spawn. My fortress is literally in the two worst biomes to make a weather farm. I, I literally feel defeated. I wasted a ton of effort and a good amount of this 100 days on this farm that doesn't work. So I just kind of head home. Then as I went home through the portal, I got the beacon advancement again again. Wait a second, my power had gone out a couple of days ago and sometimes you can reset your advancements. I really hope this didn't happen. Anyways, I checked my advancements and it turns out that I just haven't gotten this one yet. It's the advancement for getting a fully powered beacon and standing next to it. I don't understand how I don't have that already, but at least my advancements were safe. On day 290, I started the day with an unhealthy amount of capitalism. And then I accidentally hit this man with my axe. No, I could have killed him. Luckily, his trades didn't go up. I think my villager reputation was so high from all the trades that it basically made no difference. I mean, you heard it here. Minecraft says, as long as you have enough money, you can go around hitting people with no repercussions. I ended up with a sweet 45 blocks of emerald from all of those trades. Then I checked my bamboo farm and look at this thing go. It has almost three double chests full. I decided that today I wanted to bask in my wealth and to make up for my sad wither skeleton farm failure, I went and checked my iron farm. I watched this man die and got a stack and 15 in about two days. Nice. I checked on the creeper slash spider farm and it's still not doing that great, but it's not bad. Then I spent the rest of the day cleaning out my mess full of shulkers. On day 291, I began cleaning up the compound. I decided to fill in the shallow water area because it kind of looked awful. On day 292, I continued to clean up the compound. I erased the small sand island thing that was just kind of chilling under my bridge. Then I went back for some dank capitalism and scored 15 blocks of emerald. Then after almost 300 days, I finally tore down the walls that I had built in the first 10 days. These walls have almost experienced a year of history and now they're gone. I really have a ton of room to work with for 400 days. Then in celebration of me being the top 1% in my Minecraft world, I expanded the walls around my compound with fancy blackstone and emerald blocks to assert my dominance over the poor. Just look at this wall. It really does look so good. On day 293, I did some more sweet capitalism to rebuild that pile of emeralds that I used while making the wall. Then I decided to go back to the nether and search soul sand valleys for a new nether fortress. I ended up finding this bastion not far from my portal and I exploited their open loot room. And hey, I got some pretty dank loot. Then while exploring, I found another bastion with some pretty beefy looking chest rooms, which I decided to cheese. Look at all these small brain brutes. Can't stop me, big brain. Honestly, 
With loot like this, no wonder why this bastion was full of small brains. On day 294, I decided, you know what, screw it. I took on another bastion, and this one was really large, actually. So, of course, I cheesed it, as any Minecrafter would do. I really want the loot, but everything was conspiring against me. I think I accidentally shot a zombie piglin, so I had a literal army after me, and the ghasts wouldn't stop spawning. The loot from this bastion was also not really worth it, but I did get another pig step disc, so. Anyways, while looking Looking around the bastion, I did notice a great spot to turn into a gold farm because it was surrounded by the soul sand biome, which can only spawn a few skeletons. This is why I need to find another fortress in one. Then I turned this abandoned portal into an active portal to see how far away I was in the overworld, and I ended up in a cave. On days 295 through 296, I actually found what I was looking for. I found a perfect nether fortress. It had a crossroads that was over lava, and it was inside a warped forest. I ran around farming this fortress for the rest of the day, and I easily got the remaining skulls that I needed. Now, I just need to summon and kill four more withers for my sixtuple beacon. This fortress was absolutely nuts. In 400 days, I will definitely turn this into an actual working wither skeleton farm, and I will shower my land in beacons. After collecting wither skulls, I made a portal to the overworld, and here we are! Negative 18,000 blocks away. That's gonna be a yikes for me. This is the price I pay for a good wither farm. I also spawned in the middle of the ocean in the sky, which is actually pretty useful because it makes it easier to find this place. Anyways, I decided to fly home in the nether because it was significantly shorter. I also didn't have enough fireworks to get back in the overworld anyways. However, I also didn't have any more fire resistance potions, so if I fell in lava while flying through the nether, it was over. So I had to be very careful. The trip home was mega stressful, but it didn't actually take that long because of the lodestone compass I placed by my home portal. I actually ran into the path that I had originally made that led to the other fortress, and these stupid magma cubes almost made me lose a totem. Honestly, magma cubes suck. Why do you do so much damage? On day 297, I emptied my shulkers of the loot that I had gotten from the bastions. Then I spent the night just looking over all the progress that I've made in this world. It's truly a beautiful thing. I have spent weeks of time working on this world, and then these flying jerks interrupted my self-reflection. Thank you, 2017 Minecon voters. On day 298, I went to check on my massive bamboo farm, and I may have messed up the storage. The bamboo is way too much. Then I did some more juicy trading and got 14 blocks of emerald. I also went out to go ruin some more forests in search of some apples, because I wanted to have more golden apples for my wither fights, just in case. And hey, I ended up with 10 apples. That's the price for half of a forest. I spent the rest of the day preparing potions and AFKing. On day 299, I headed to the nether with my supplies and went to the roof of the nether to fight some withers. Honestly, I love wither fights because of how challenging they can be if you aren't that prepared, so I figured you'd want to see all four of the withers die, so sit back and watch the show.
After killing the Withers, I went back to the overworld and collected my two already existing beacons. On day 300, I found the perfect spot to place my six double beacon, and of course, I decided to be super extra bougie, and I decked it out with golden diamond blocks. I then added all six buffs, and now I am the equivalent of a literal god. Do you hear me, god? Fight me. Anyways, now that we have this beacon, that is the last of the to-do list, and we have finished our 300 days. On day 301, I started the day by getting used to the world again. I'll admit it, I haven't played this world in a couple of weeks, but now that I was back, I am ready to begin the many projects that I've been planning for a while now. The first thing that I wanted to tackle was the end. I didn't visit the end at all in the last 100 days, and I have some crazy ideas. But first, I needed to empty my inventory. The past me guy is a complete jerk, and he left a ton of crap in my inventory. I also gathered some shulkers full of supplies to begin the end project. After getting what I needed together, I flew back to where my end portal was, but before going down, I had to steal this bee's home. I do still plan on making a bee farm after all. That is, if it exists, I can make it into a farm for capitalism. Anyways, I dug down to the portal room and I decided to make a nether portal and it put me into this dumpy basalt biome. But luckily, it actually wasn't that far from my home portal, so I made this totally not sketchy and very safe path across the lava so I can get back to the end quickly. On day 302, I traveled to the end with supplies and I began planning how I would spawn proof the end island. I don't want to build into the void because it's way too dangerous and I kind of want to make a farm like Phil's of Minecraft's so that way I can kill withers under the portal and farm wither roses using the enderman. So I decided that I was going to try flooding the end with water instead of using slabs or buttons. It'll be quicker and it might look a lot nicer. I also think that in the future I can make it look super nice when 1.17 comes out. So I began by making a stone slab staircase from where I spawn in the end and I continued the path all the way to the portal. Except with my luck the path lined up directly with an obsidian portal. Polar. So I did what any lazy person would do and I went around it. Just picture this as one of those boardwalks that are built up around trees. That is, if your tree looked like this. I added some nice borders to it with spruce fence and slabs. In the future, I definitely want to touch up the end, but since I have so much to do in these 100 days, it's going to have to stay as basic as Ugg boots and Starbucks coffee. On days 303 through 307, I began flooding the end. I decided that I would let the water flow into the void because, uh, I'm lazy, okay? Do you know how many ledges there are off of the edges of the end? Do you know how many ledges there are off the side of the end island? a lot. Anyways, this process was surprisingly relaxing. Also, you can call me a sadist if you like, but it was pretty amusing watching the Enderman slowly run out of places to run or hide. Don't worry, Enderman. This is only the beginning. This process did end up taking until day 307, and since I'm out of things to say, here is a time lapse of me slowly drowning these mans in their own home. It was also pretty cool seeing the Endermen suffer in the water because they had no places to teleport to. Once again, I just want to say, I'm not a sadist. Anyways, I left this spot of land so I didn't have to deal with the Endermen all teleporting and spawning on the path and the farm as I was building it. On day 308, I began building the path that would go to the Enderman farm. It's still kind of basic, and I definitely will need to light it up so the non-slab blocks don't spawn anything, but it was looking pretty good for what it was. Unfortunately, I ran out of stone, and I had torn down the stone generator that I had in the compound, so I built this super sketchy one in the air by my portal out of some nice mismatched blocks, and I spent the rest of the day with a remote on top of my mouse so I could 
get stone. After getting more stone, I finished up the path leading over to the mini end portal. After building the path over, I went looking for places that I missed when spawn proofing and I found the mother load of men hiding over here. Drowning these boys was more fun than I would like to admit. On day 309, I went to set up the killing area for the Withers and Endermen and then I realized something. I am literally so dumb and I'm sure you're over here screaming at your screen right now. I built a path all the way to the Outlands portal for no reason. The killing chamber is supposed to be under the end portal, but you know what it's okay it's fine we we now have a path over here for when we want to go farm some more shulkers and find some end cities so instead you should say something good about this screw up down in the comments like wow you're so good at building that you've thought ahead without even thinking ahead or something like that anyways i finished up the path to this portal so it looked nicer also i kind of screwed up the slabs for most of it but that's fine because it will all be lit up anyways so no enderman can spawn this process took all the way until the end of day 310. On day 311, I went back to the overworld to get more torches and supplies so I could finish lighting the end path and I could build the enderman farm. I need a minecart as well so I can trap an endermate as bait to get the endermen to drop to their deaths. After getting supplies, I went back to the end and I dug out an area underneath the end portal. This is where I'm going to trap withers and have my enderman killing chamber. But I realized I was going to need a lot more glass if I wanted to watch the enderman fall and I mean, come on, you know I want to watch the Endermen fall to the deaths. Who wouldn't want to watch them fall? On day 312, I began the day with the first beautiful set of capitalism for these 100 days. But first, I had to go check on my bamboo farm, and uh, I think I has some problems. Anyways, I crafted some of my ungodly amount of bamboo into sticks, and I did some juicy capitalism, but I only ended up with a measly 14 emerald blocks. I'm going to need much, much more for a way larger wall that I have planned that I'm going to build around the comp found in a future 100 days. After that, I went out looking for a good place for a sand montage, and I found this shipwreck near the shore, which had a buried treasure map and not that much loot. But you know, hey, maybe maybe this 100 days I'll actually finally go and loot all of my buried treasures. Probably not though. Let me know in the comments if you think I should go do that in the next 100 days, because I've had a lot of treasure maps just kind of chilling in a chest for a while now. So yeah. Also, let me know of any other ideas you have. I'm super open to suggestions. Anyways, Q new better sand montage. This one in third person. Throughout the sand montage, I had to go to multiple different beaches to get enough sand. And I know, I keep saying this, but I really need to find a good desert near my base. After this, I flew home at night and began smelting all of my glass. I spent all of day 313 for the most part just waiting for my glass to smelt. I converted a ton of bamboo into sticks and I did some more sweet capitalism. I even mended all of my tools and my elytra. I decided that while I was waiting for the glass to smelt, I would begin transferring some more villagers to the trading hall. I really didn't want to do this because villagers are truly awful and they deserve their fate. But my food supply is running low and I want farmers for infinite golden carrots and apples. And surprisingly, this process was super easy and laid back. The villagers were actually excited to join me for their new life of confinement. I quickly got five future farmers of America into my minecarts and down to the Infectus Platformis, which is going to be the new name of my inflection platform because I don't know, it, it just is. Deal with it. I think some of them were having second thoughts on their new career path though because they kept trying to suffocate themselves in the walls. The farming industry ain't what it used to be. Anyways, I got them into boats and I lured one zombie to infect them before sunrise. On days 314 through 315, I went back to the end and began building the glass chute for the Enderman to fall in. It's exactly a 43 block drop so I could kill them 
with my fist if I wanted. Then I placed a minecart to spawn an endermite and after a stack I got one but my chest piece had thorns on it so it died. I didn't even know that I had thorns in my chest piece. This is literally why thorns is a trash enchantment. So I went to spawn another one and he would not get in the minecart and this man pushed me into my own kill chamber. Anyways attempt number three went pretty well and I trapped this smug little jerk in his brand new home that he will be spending the rest of his eternity in. Or at least that's what I would have said if I could name him while he was in the minecart. I let him out to name him and before he went back in the cart he fell to his death. And that was also the only name tag that I had brought to the end. This is probably going to be the worst day of the 100 days. Or so I had thought. On day 315, which for some reason I listed here twice. I, I don't know why. I think the last one was supposed to just be day 314, but let's just pretend the last one was day 314, okay? Anyways, when I came back to the overworld, it was the end of day 315, so I decided to go lure some more zombies to torment my future farmers. Except when I went to my platform, I saw that this iron golem jerk killed the only villager that I had already infected as a zombie. So I did what had to be done. Remember what happened to that iron golem in 300 days? Yeah, well, that's right. I waterboarded this man's too. You can spend each eternity down there thinking about what you did. That is until the trident drown shoves his rod. You know, you know what? Never mind. Anyways, it turned out that it was actually midday. So I kidnapped three more farmer boys and I expanded my platform to make it more golem proof. Except these guys kept trolling me by playing musical boats. I literally cannot win today. After getting those jerks all separated, I went to find some more zombies to torture them for profit. And this process only took me four trips. Now that I have all the extra space, it was super easy leading the zombies to each villager. I actually just barely had enough time to get all these zombies because the last one had caught on fire because it was morning and he almost didn't make it but now I have seven future farmers that I can waste golden apples on. Kind of ironic really. I need more apples to make farmer villagers that I will use to get more apples. Yeah. Capitalism. On day 316 I began the day by culling my cow population. I need more food to hold me over until I get my farmer trades going and I'm sorry cows i have forsaken you then i went back to the end and i have officially come to the conclusion that i hate endermites this man pushed me off the farm a third time and this time he almost costed me my first totem of undying but not today jerk anyways i named him slug from flushed away because this thing is literal poop and he just kind of reminds me of the slugs from flushed away if you've seen the flushed away movie let me know in the comments it's a pretty old movie now anyways now i have to center the minecart and i can begin building the platform i set up the safe zone and enderman trap and then i built out this nice little platform fun fact enderman can spot and attack an endermite from up to 64 blocks away did you know that i didn't and i needed something for me to say while i showed you this cool sped up footage of me building in third person after finishing the platform i broke the glass in front of the endermite and it is now fully functional on day 317 it was finally time to flood the last piece of land that these endermen desperately cling to and honestly doing this this does not get old. After I flooded the last piece of land, our Enderman farm was officially functional. Just look at these insane gains. This farm rinse XP and pearls, and the occasional Enderman will TP out after they fall, but they're still one-shot kills, and not many of them actually do it, so this is fine. I also made the floor of the room into glass, so they can't TP in here. Enderman cannot TP to transparent blocks. And now that my Enderman farm was complete, I had to put the Wither Trap to the test. This means I needed to go back to the nether to get some more skulls. I also need some more beacons so I can expand my land forever. On day 318, I went to the nether and flew towards the soon-to-be super wither skeleton farm. I spent all of days 318 through 319 decapitating these men so I could feed my lust for beacons. I ended up getting seven wither skulls, but like the massive brain that I am, I forgot to bring more than half a stack of food and I may or may not have committed piglin war crimes, so I think it was time to leave. So I drank my fire resistance potion and I flew home. I cannot wait to go back and spawn proof this area. This farm is going to be absolutely insane. Mark my words, by the end of these 100 days, I will have so many beacons. On day 320, I went to the end to test out my new weather trap and uh, okay, listen, I don't know how I messed it up, but the weather got out and he, he hurts in hardcore a lot. Luckily, he was mostly distracted by the enderman, but he also healed for every enderman that he killed. I desperately struggled to kill him and then my worst nightmare came true he got out of the kill room he could very well undo 
all of the work that I put into making the end into what I wanted it to be. So I decided to run home through the portal. I got some regen and strength two potions and I went back to the end to take back my land. This fight was pretty intense and it looked like so much damage. All of my beautiful work was being wrecked by this literal monster. After damaging him enough, I got him to come back down after I weakened him with my bow and with strength two, I managed to kill him. And just look at this mess. I went around to assess the damages and I guess they could have been much worse. I killed all of the endermen that teleported into this room after they had taken damage and I began repairing it, except all of my stained glass was back at the house. So I guess for now this works because the blocks under the enderman killing chamber all broke and they just kind of fell to their deaths. Either way, this was a pretty big mistake and I'm real lucky that I didn't lose any totems or, you know, an endermite that I may have taken a lot of tries to get into a minecart. So I guess, I guess this works out. It's, it is what it is, man. On day 321, I went back to the end with glass and supplies and I was greeted by a nice empty room just like I had left it when I had left the end before. Or at least that's what I would say if the room wasn't full of some freshly spawned ender orphans. So I drank another strength two potion because why not and I got to work chopping these boys up. And I know what you're thinking. It's okay. The wither took their parents already. I'm doing them a favor. After cleaning up the room, I fixed the killing chamber and I drowned my pain away with some sweet XP orbs. After a little bit of studying, I realized what I did wrong with the killing area. I needed one more block of space so I could leave the obsidian underneath so he can't fall down and escape. So it was time. I built another wither and I placed the skulls and it immediately went wrong. He once again decimated my killing room. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I drank another strength in regen 2 potion and I pretty easily killed him but now my room was once again a giant crater. After this point I did some more research and I figured out my new mistake. I should place the obsidian with two spaces above it and build the wither sideways. Also I need to be standing next to him so that way he doesn't shoot any blue skulls which can break bedrock. So the next time I go to kill it it will be gg -Z. but as for now I'm stuck cleaning up after my own stupidity. On day 322 I went back home again to get more glass and fix up my killing room uh, again. Did I mention that I was doing this again? Third time to be exact. Anyways I didn't have any more black stained glass so I needed to promote some squids to black dye and I was rudely interrupted by this mouth breather. After that I went back to the end and I fully fixed the killing room and I replaced the walls with stone bricks and I added some more chests. Now this place is better than it was before. Anyways uh don't <laughs> don't mention that little um goof up in the comments okay? Instead, say something like how you should become a channel member to support me or something. I don't know, nothing big. Anyways, I killed some more of my friends here and God, that is so satisfying. Nothing like drinking up the life essence of others for my own capital gain. On day 323, I got some obsidian and I crafted two new beacons. You know what this means, right? With these beacons, I can further expand my land with some more deforestation. I also went to go do some more capitalism so I could build a beacon with some nice new emerald blocks, except I was interrupted by by my rude villagers thinking that they needed to sleep. So I spent the night making iron and emerald blocks for my new beacons. Beacons, sponsored by capitalism, when the 1% owns the 99. I also checked my iron golem farm, which only had a stack because somebody keeps looting the iron chest each day without recording it. I'm not sure who that is. Day 324 was going to be a huge day. I was going to focus on decimating the forest hill to the left of my house, and I also needed a ton of apples for my infected village. Villagers. Kind of ironic, you know, since they sell apples. Anyways, I built a nice shiny new beacon and gave it haste too, and I began decimating this mountain. I would like to clear a whole chunk of this forest, and that would also supply me with grass, stone, and wood for days. Let alone, I could also get a lot of new apples. And once I have all this new space, I could really start turning this huge field into a sprawling home. Then I spent the whole night crafting some more golden apples, which were becoming harder to craft by the day because I'm desperately starting to to run out of gold. On day 326, I decided that I would only begin curing two zombie villagers at a time because each has to be cured about six times and I have a very limited supply of both gold and apples. At least I'll have infinite apples and golden carrots after I turn these mans into farmers. After this, I spent the whole rest of the day erasing that mountain with my new cow friend that was hanging out with me and I maybe got a bit distracted by him. I made a new friend and I wanted to show him around the compound. So 
also. I made him a boat, and from this day forward, he will be known as Big Mac the Cow. And in the future, he will have his own likeness plastered on a giant statue, so all will know of our friendship. On days 327 through 328, I woke up with some inspiration. So I went and recurred my two zombie villagers again so I could finally get food. Then I decided I would pause the mountain destruction project and I would do some touching up around my house. I started by testing out planting trees in the middle area and I was getting pretty unlucky with some of these ugly trees. Anyways, while trying to undo some of my deforestation, I noticed an intruder on my lands. As far as I'm concerned, these guys are also eagles. And you know what we do with eagles, right? I tried to spare the simps, but they kept attacking me in the comments, so I did what had to be done. Then I spent the rest of the night laying out the foundation for the fourth bridge, which would lead to the mainland portion of my compound. And the entire night I was constantly harassed by drowned, which made me realize that now that my underground caves were so well lit up, I also had to light up my ocean. Sadly enough for me to say, this bridge took me two Minecraft days to finish because it had to be centered perfectly in an OCD friendly way. I lit the bridge up with lanterns and it was done. And I'm very proud of it. I give this bridge five stars on Yelp. On days 329 through 330, 330, I placed fences around the middle area and I placed some more trees. I also decided to hang lanterns from them so they could have a nice aesthetic. After this, I started lighting up the ocean area around my house with some more lily pads with lanterns underneath. This area is really coming together. On day 331, I realized that I've been neglecting my capitalistic duties, so I went back to the boys for some more capitalism. Just to look at all this XP and all these juicy emeralds. Also, for some reason, the last couple of villagers were scamming me for double the sticks. Probably because they don't like their new noisy neighbors. Also speaking of neighbors, I cured these mans for the third time today. Soon I will get some new farmers and then I need more gold. Oh and let's just take a second to get a nice overview of the center area. Isn't this place beautiful? I was thinking of maybe adding some yellow and purple flowers for the domination aesthetic but we'll see how it goes. Anyways, this place is really looking good. I'm really proud of it. I also finally fenced in my path to the creeper farm and I kind of began finishing the collection area for the iron golems. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place right now, but things are really getting done. On days 332 through 333, I began the day by curing my mans for a fourth time. And there was this zombie that somehow got into my trading hall and he apparently broke and stole my door. I don't even know where this guy came from. The porch is lit up and it's literally daytime, but whatever. Ever. do what you want to do. After this, I spent the rest of the days just chipping away at that mountain and my tools were really taking a beating, so I went back to the end to see how fast my enderman farm really repairs tools. And look at this thing go. XP go. Burr. On day 334, I visited my cows for some more harvesting of their flesh. Now that I have some food, I decided I needed to go to the nether in search of some gold. I mean, I have to feed my villager infecting rings somehow. I started out by flying by a new bastion and this one was pretty big. Big, but I cheesed it as usual and I found a couple of chests with a typical mediocre loot. But I wasn't here for this regular loot. I was here for some sweet, sweet gold to fuel my capitalism. Also, this bastion ended up being one of those unreasonably dangerous ones that had the huge square room in it. So I just kind of left until I found a much better area to mine some gold ore in. Also, I wanted to show you this because it is actually super amazing. I have never seen the roof of the nether with the new update, but just look at at this view. I had to just stop there and stare in awe. It is breathtaking. If the cave and cliff update revitalizes the overworld like the nether update did here, then I am beyond hyped for it. While continuing to explore, I found another nether fortress that was hidden in this basalt biome. And this place is pretty gross, so I just kind of left. But on the way out, I had some gatekeepers. You hear that? It's past tense. Had. I killed them in hell, so now they're double dead. I stayed in the nether until about day 337 until I headed back home to smelt all of my new gold. While waiting for them to smelt, I cured my villagers a fifth time and ended up with enough gold to make more than a stack of golden apples. And later that night, I cured my villagers for the sixth time and I killed their zombies. After this, I AFK near them throughout the night until they were cured and I quickly raced against the clock to make some beds so they would actually get into their holes before daylight. On day 338, 
these mans were not being very helpful. They each wanted the opposite work block, so I was forced to let them out, and then I found out that their trades were somehow not that good. So I had to put them back in boats for round two of infections. Come on, guys. You do this to yourself. I mean, I don't know what you want me to do about it. So since I needed two more zombies and it wasn't night, I went back for some more beautiful destruction of nature. If you want me to be honest with you, I don't even know what I plan to do with this land yet, but I just kind of want to clear it out so I can make more space for my compound. Also, I swear I will use it eventually. I don't know when, but it will happen. After it became nighttime, I went back out for some zombos for my boys. That is, until I noticed that this, uh, this boy is not in his boat. And I was like, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Something's not right here. There is a trident boy throwing tridents after him. So after fighting to get him back in the boat, I went to go get the zombos that I wanted and I was attacked by some flying devils. But things were all good because I was not going to let some unnecessary mob stop me now. After collecting my new zombies, I went to check on my farms and I got almost nine stacks of iron from my iron farm. Also, my creeper and spider farm is in full production. Look at the stacks upon stacks of loot in these chests. On day 339, I went out on my journey for some more apples. That is my super ironic quest. I need apples to get a farmer who sells apples. Anyways, I was hacking away at this forest until I noticed this. There was a sleeping fox and then I just kind of sat there and I watched him, very peaceful. And while I was watching him, I realized how bad I felt that I was, you know, destroying his home. But then I had a reality check and I was like, wait a second, this is a video game and I really need apples in this video game. So I'm sorry, Virtual Fox. And you know, the further the series goes along, the, uh, the worse this forest becomes each and every hundred days. This, uh, this place is looking a little not okay. But I mean, at the expense of the forest, I did get 10 apples but at what cost? Anyways, I went back to cure my boys again, which makes seven times because these farmers think that they're special for some reason. On days 340 through 341, I started the day by infecting my villagers again for the eighth time. Then I decided to break my sugarcane farm that's just been kind of awkwardly sitting here unharvested for weeks of time now because I have some big plans that I would like to begin around the compound to make this place nicer. But first, I cured my boys again and I decided to kill one of the zombies. Hopefully this time the trades will be one for one. I spent all of day 342 planning and starting to build my brand new villager carrot farm. I had this awesome idea to make a carrot farm upstairs and have there be a ground floor collection area and I could build like a large barn around it that has a dock on the back that goes out into the water. On days 343 through 344, I began kidnapping boys for my new carrot farm. You know, most of the ways that I make money in this game involve prison war camps. Anyways, after getting the first two in, all I needed to do was get one boy from the villager breeder and uh, this was not easy. It was kind of a pain actually, no pun intended, but I did get the last boy into the new prison and I may have accidentally beat him. Oh no, now his ripoff trades will be even worse. What will I do? And now my carrot farm is 100% operational. After that, I went to move my carrot villager into his new home and I had to be super careful because the prison guards were spawn camp the zombies. One pixel too far and I punched the villager and it could be game over. Two iron golems versus me equals dead me. On day 345, I went back to check on the new farmer and why are his trades so bad? Is it because I punched his friend? They, they should definitely be too far away so that should not have affected it. Anyways, after being ripped off by another farmer again, I went to go do some capitalism in the hopes of maybe fixing his trades. All of my stick boys are now trading two emeralds at the moment and I'm starting to fear for my life. I feel like there's an uprising coming. I really do need to start doing raids so I can get the hero of the village buff and not have to worry about this anymore. After all that capitalism, I cured his friend again and this time I killed his zombie. Hopefully, if I get apples and begin carrying them all, they will give me a higher reputation. After my second farmer cured, I gave him a job block and he too only had 16 carrot trades. At this point, I had cured them each nine times and I'm getting pretty annoyed. I am in desperate need of apples so I can actually start carrying more. Oh, the cruel irony. On day 300 46, I needed apples again, so I guess it was back to some good old-fashioned deforestation. I then spent the rest of the night getting more zombies to the infection platform, Infectus Platformus, so I could continue to punish these farmers for their rip-off prices. How much gold do I have to waste on you mans? I cured them both again, and I went to sleep, mad. On days 347 through 349, I went back to my local neighborhood dark oak forest to kill some more nature to supply my expansion. I ran out of dark oak, and I I needed to build the weird house thing around
around my new carrot farm, so I needed to partake in some more deforestation. And while killing nature, I got seven more apples. I went home and crafted them into golden apples, and I'm now back up to 18. So I went back to cure my scam artist farmers again, and then I spent the night working on the building for the new farmers. I'm gonna be brutally honest with myself here, I have no clue what I'm doing with this build. I mean, I had ideas, but I'm trying to build outside of my comfort zone, so this build took a lot longer than usual. I typically never use stripped wood, and I recently had a newfound respect for it, so I wanted to try it out so I could make this a more farm-like building. Also, while building this farmhouse, House, I realized that the red and black sheep weren't paying their rent, so it was time to evict them. But during the eviction process, I was interrupted by this father and son reunion that I quickly put an end to. Anyways, consider Operation Sheep Eviction a success. I also had to relocate my beloved Jeff the alpaca that I totally didn't steal from a wandering trader, and it seems like he likes his new home. On days 350 through 351, I continued building the front of the farmhouse, and I actually think this is going to look good. I decided to fence in the entrance to the building and I planted some trees and added some bushes and crops and it's looking really really good. However you should totally ignore the entrance to my mine that's in the middle of the path. I tried my best to build the roof and I was pretty worried that it was going to look scuffed but it also turned out pretty great. On day 354 I dug out the ground behind the farmhouse so I could turn it into the deck. This way the barn can overlap into the water and take up some of the empty space in between. After building the deck I decided decided to add some trees for a more natural touch. I really want my whole compound area to be full of nice touches like these trees. On days 355 through 358, I started working on a small side building to this wall, so it didn't look as plain as it did. Plus, I guess I could turn this into a horse stable, and I can get some horses that I probably won't use. I also saw this cool idea online for using campfires to add a more rustic feel to the build. So I went back and replaced all of the oak slabs for the roof and it really did look rustic. It was looking like an authentic barn. I was pretty happy with it. But after that I ran out of wood so I went to go get some and on the way back these two skeletons with enchanted bows tried to jump me only to get scared of my doggos and run away. Suckers. Then I added these cool lamps to each section for proper lighting so I can get rid of these gross icky torches and I was really happy with how the build turned out. On day 359, I started the day by just staring at the new build and honestly, I am really proud of myself. It's all coming together so well. It's definitely not finished though. The inside of the farm building needs some work and I'm actually thinking about adding an auto feather farm in there. The area around the building is still a pretty big mess though, so I do need to clean that up in the future. But instead of doing that, I went to tame the gray horses by my house and with my luck, they were all super slow, but I made that really nice horse stable so I figured, you know, I kind of needed some horses. Then I went back and I grabbed this all gray horse and he had a decent amount of hearts, but he was even slower than the flash with broken legs. I gave him gold armor and I plopped him in the middle pen. The second horse that I grabbed had some white clouds on his side and this man was fast AF. So I gave him diamond armor and I put him in the left pen. I then went back to grab this polka dot boy and he would not let me control him for the rest of his life. I really don't understand why. However, after I tamed him, he was also a pretty fast dude, so I gave him the other diamond armor and I put him in the right pen. On day 360, I tried to evict the broken golem from my farmhouse and he didn't really fit through the door. I could just open up the wall or this could be his new forever home that he protects with his life. I'm guessing you know which one of those ended up happening. Then I started to dig out the bottom of the floor. I was planning on using stone bricks until I had the idea to switch it up to cobblestone because it would look more farmy and I've really never used cobblestone for a build like ever. Anyways, I ran out of stone while in there so I needed to leave and I was kind of worried that it would be dark enough to spawn things but I was like nah, it'll be fine. That is until when I came back to this horde of mobs and then I realized that my iron golem was also gone. I I found his remains scattered on the floor. I, I guess that's one way to evict him, but damn, I, I kind of feel bad. On day 361, I began the day by curing my zombie villagers. These guys really need to hurry up because I'm running out of food. After that, I collected supplies and began building my new auto chicken feather farm. Except I realized that the lava embers can travel through blocks and building it downstairs would probably result 
in my entire barn and horse stable burning to the ground, which I'm pretty sure I'm not that cool with. So instead, I decided to add a platform by my bamboo farm for the chickens. I mean, the whole purpose of the chicken pen was to get feathers to trade for emeralds anyways, so this kind of works out better. I then spent the rest of this day gathering all the supplies that I needed into this shulker box for the chicken farm. On day 362, I began building the new chicken farm that I like to call the chicken chamber. I went to collect some eggs from my totally sane collection of eggs so I can get some chicky boys to add to the new chicken chamber. I spent like five minutes just standing there eating eggs into the chamber and I uh, had a mishap. Some, uh, some boys escaped. I'm sorry my child. I continued emptying my inventory of eggs until I got to watch my auto bamboo flying machine do its thing. Fun fact, all of the chests downstairs are packed with so much bamboo that they can't fit anymore and all of this bamboo is just going to waste. I placed an observer on top of the chicken farm and I finished up the killing chamber, except I was rudely interrupted by this simp with a trident. I made quick work of him, but he wasn't kind enough to gift me with his trident. I mean, what a shame. I could have named it tier 3 sub. Anyways, my chicken farm is now officially done and once the chickens grow up, they can start producing. Also, shout out to Mysticat for the farm idea. On days 363 through 365, I needed food and this chicken egg farm is no longer necessary, so... I'm sorry boys, your journeys are over. So, I made this fenced in chamber of future death and I built a primitive egg yeeter and it looks like it's time for a good old fashioned montage. <laughs> While waiting for the eggs to fully fill the chicken pen, I destroy the old chicken farm structure. And at this point, the chickens were destroying my frame rate. My FPS was in the 30s when around these boys. They needed to go, like, soon. This is the first time my FPS was actually under 60 in the entire 400 days of this world. And I'm definitely not a fan of it. I spent the rest of this day and all of day 365 AFKing so the chickens could grow up and the game was barely playable like this. In fact, they were lagging my whole compound and base as one last stand against my chicken killing tyranny. Anyways, while suffering with lag, I decided to check my iron and creeper farms since I haven't checked them in like forever, and the iron farm had 12 stacks of iron. I checked the creeper farm and uh, there were four double chests full of string and gunpowder. This farm is going absolutely ham. After waiting for more than 20 minutes for the chickens to grow up, I decided that I couldn't take it anymore, so I went to go slaughter them all. And look at all of this XP. There's something super satisfying about getting sweeping edge kills on tons of mobs. Also, these mans had laid an entire inventory worth of eggs while they were here, but I now have like 15 stacks of chicken and 20 stacks of feathers for emerald trade, so things worked out in the end, I guess. On day 366, it was time for some more capitalism. I have been ignoring these guys for like 10 days now, and they needed some more love. Now that I have a ton of string, sticks, and feathers, I can triple my trade productivity of these guys. Although, their stick prices are now 3 because of inflation, almost like somebody's been flooding the market with sticks. I really don't know who could be doing that. But this is also why we really need to make a raid farm in the next 100 days. Anyways, I went through these guys two times each and I netted a stack and a half of emerald blocks. That's right, you heard me. Blocks. After that, I went to go check out my new farmers and for some reason the right guy keeps dropping crops everywhere. The left one isn't doing it, so I don't know what this guy's problem is, but they're producing some good carrot stonks. I also had the idea for maybe putting some auto sheep shares downstairs here, or maybe a cow pen or something. I don't know. I needed to use this space, but that would probably have to happen another day because I want to set up that guardian farm that I mentioned like, I don't know, 200 days ago? And that's exactly what I was going to do, so I began collecting supplies for it. I had everything that I needed except for the soul sand and obsidian, so I went to the nether to start getting soul sand. On day 367, I went down to the mines and I collected a stack and a half of obsidian. This is going to be used for the nether portals that I make around the guardians, so I could send them to the shadow realm. I also made some potions of invisibility 
money so I could avoid the guardians. I've never actually used potions of invisibility without armor and I'm not that comfortable with it. So I'm going to bring an extra totem of undying just in case. And right after this, there was a thunderstorm. In the future, when I get a channeling trident, I can farm mob hebs with super creepers. But for now, I would rather not have any wood house get burned down. On day 368, I jumped into the water to travel to the guardian farm and I noticed something casually swimming in the water. There was a zombie horse from the lightning storm. I tried to snipe the skeletons with my bow, but I screwed up and killed two of them. But luckily the third skeleton died from my thorns and I now have a zombie skeleton horse. Also the other skeleton that I thought got lost at sea came back, so I killed him too and now I have two skeleton horses. I grabbed two saddles and I drug them back over to my horse stable. I moved the diamond boys together in the same pen and I gave the undead boys their new pen. Let me know what I should name them in the 500 days down in the comments. Anyways, this took up all of my daylight, so I went to go cure my villagers again, but I was down to only two golden apples, and I wanted to keep them just in case the guardian farm went wrong, so I just kind of went to bed that night. The guardian farm cometh tomorrow. On day 369, nice, I went out near the guardian farm, and when looking underwater for a place to build up for the platform, I found a sunken ship. I looted two of the chests that were easy to get, and I found another buried treasure map to add to my collection of others that I've been ignoring. Anyways, I built up and made myself a platform to put my supplies on and <clears throat> get undressed. And I spent the next three days building this farm and the entire time I was very on edge. It's not that great having no armor in hardcore, you know? It's it's a little not okay. I always had a potion of invisibility in my hotbar and I kept my eye on the mirror symbol the entire time. Oh, and I also got this farm idea from Mysticat as well. So again, another big shout out. After finishing the overworld portion, I lit the portals and went to the nether and I had no clue where I was. I should be close to my nether spawn, but I'm like in a hole and there's a bastion that I haven't looted yet. After my mining fatigue went away, I looked around to see if I knew where I was and I had zero clue where in the nether I was. There was an unlooted bastion and a abandoned portal that I've never seen before. On day 372, I went back through the portal so I could get my compass that would lead me back to my original portal and I found out that this portal was about a thousand blocks away in the nether, which doesn't even make any sense. So I had the idea of making another portal near it. And it again, it makes zero sense. Why is it so far away? The next portal that I made ended up being exactly where it should be. And at this point, I'm kind of just at a loss here. Am I really going to have to make a 1000 block long path just to the dumb collection area? After this, I went back through the portal in the farm again, and it now links to the proper portal, which you know what? I won't argue. I'll just take it. And I found out that this portal is right on the other side of the wall by my home portal. So now all I have to do is break the other portal by the farm and I'm good to go. I knew portals were dangerous before this, but I'm now realizing just how dangerous they really are. On day 374, I went out and broke the nether portal and went through the guardian trap just to make sure it was actually going to work and it does. I still have no clue what happened, but it works now, I, I guess. This does concern me though, because in the future I plan on breaking the nether portal down in the mine and, you know, adding it to the surface and maybe that portal will end up bringing me to some completely random location or maybe the portal will link up with one that has guardians in it and I'll just get killed so I might just not move that portal. After this I finished up the killing chamber and the collection system and I made the path to the spawn portal and it was super close and easy so in the end things all worked out pretty well. On day 375 I drank more invisibility and I went back to the ocean monument. Today the goal was to cover as much of the top with soul sand as I could so after I make the AFK platform in the sky I won't lose out on spawns. Without Aqua Infinity, this took forever, so I actually tried it with my armor on for just a minute or so, and the Guardians hurt just a little. Anyways, this took all day, and I couldn't break the top part because of the mining fatigue. It was becoming night, so I went back home to sleep. On day 376, I got some milk from my Moo Moo, so I could break the top part of the monument, and I swam back to the farm. And I began breaking blocks. That is, until I got mining fatigue again, so I drank some milk, and then I had the literal most terrifying moment in the entire series. This man attacked me and made me use a totem. This was the first time I've actually died in the series. I was out of there, except this guy kept chasing me down and they almost ended the entire series. I was down to two hearts and I was actually going to include the clip where I was panicking in the background, but my mic was muted so you can't even hear me scream. Anyways though, I really don't know what happened here. I, I could have bumped a guardian or something, but I, I don't know. The soul sand was pushing them up and now I'm terrified to go back there. Also, I didn't even have my other totem in my hotbar and he could have actually killed me because
because of that, I literally just panicked and did nothing. I didn't put on my armor and I didn't get the other totem. I froze in place. This is why I was putting off doing the guardian farm for so long because I knew of how awful and risky it was to make a guardian farm. So after that literal torture, I decided to go get some beacons so I could have regen and resistance too while I was there. And I'm just gonna wear armor. You know what? Screw it. Screw you guardians. So I broke down my haste beacon that I had over by this once proud mountain. To be honest, this beacon was kind of a waste of blocks anyways because I decided to work on my compound more before I added more empty land to it. But you know what? It's whatever. It will now serve the new purpose of being my bodyguard from those e-girl guardians. I also got a huge brain idea to bring my conveniently placed cow in a boat that I named Big Mac over to the guardian farm. So now I had endless amounts of milk and after this I went to sleep. As I drifted away slowly the achievement post-mortem haunted me. I had cheated death. On day 377 after gathering the supplies I needed I built a platform by the farm and I constructed a tier 4 beacon. Then I placed the beacons and gave myself speed, resistance 2, and regeneration. So those jerks stand no chance at hurting me anymore. On day 378 it was go time. I had the new buffs and lots of milk and I was determined to finish this farm. I hopped into the water and there were hella guardians attacking me. I killed a bunch with my sword and I struggled to break the rest of the monument and place the final bits of soul sand but overall I felt way safer with the beacon buffs and I finished the area. Now I just need to make a sky platform and clean up this mess and my guardian farm will officially be operational. I spent the night breaking all of the temporary dirt and now that this is all gone the guardians will spawn and be pushed by the soul sand into the portals where they can be burnt to death for their crimes they have committed against me. On day 379 I was greeted by two giant slimes in my big mine area as I was going to my nether portal. Fun fact these boys have actually been spawning a lot in the last hundred days and I haven't been talking about them and the glass that I have here is actually decreasing their spawns because this is one of the slime chunks. Anyways I went to the nether to check on my new farm's loot room since a bunch of the sea simps fell through while I was working around the farm and looky here I've already got a lot of loot and you know what this means I had to make an afk platform in the sky and afk for a day or two just to see how much this farm can really produce. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be building with these ocean blocks yet but I definitely want them. I was thinking maybe I could make like an aquarium and start gathering lots of sea creatures like squid, the new glow squid when it comes out, fish, and maybe even a guardian for the meme. That is if it doesn't kill everything else. On day 380 it was time to clean up all of the mess that I had made while building the guardian farm. I broke the bamboo pillar, removed all the stone bricks, and I broke the two beacons. After that I removed the old nether portal frame and took all of my stuff. I can see everything out here from my house so I didn't want it to look like trash. Then I flew back up to the platform with more supplies to make it big enough and not easy to miss with my elytra and I decided to make it a cool circle in the sky. I will probably make it fancier in the future but for now it's looking pretty good. I made a chamber in the center with glass walls and a roof so I can check for phantoms before I leave and I added doors so I could go in and out. I also made the floor out of glass so I could crack a cold one open with the boys. That is before they get teleported to hell to perish for my financial gain. Anyways though now that it's all done Q Guardian AFK Farm Montage. for about a day and a half and I went back to check on my loot and holy mother of loot look at all of this stuff I ended up with seven stacks of sea lanterns and a ton of blocks I also now have enough fish to make an army of cats the farm also traps squids so this is partially a squid farm I love black stained glass and now I don't need to actually make a squid farm so this is a big hog champ moment on day 385 I debated how I would handle beginning the next project the god tier wither skeleton farm I came to the sad conclusion that the quickest way and easiest way to get to that farm would be to continue that original path that I made that was originally supposed to go to the second nether fortress that I had found. It was about 600 blocks long and all I needed to make it was like, I don't know, 3000? No big deal, right? So I went home to organize my shulkers so I could carry supplies into the nether, except I had a roof intruder a again. I don't know why they keep spawning up here. Also, a baby pig boy spawned in my tunnel so I made a boat for him and captured him. Maybe if he grows up I can 
use them for something in the future, like gold trades or something. Then I went back to mining my long tunnel and not that far in, I struck one ancient debris. I guess maybe I'll make a profit from this. Overall, this process took me seven days in countless breaks because it was so mind numbing, but the path finally hit the nether fortress. I have never been so happy to see a warp forest in my life. After finishing the path, I ran back home to get all the supplies that I would need to make the wither skeleton farm. And for this design, I decided to use buttons instead of slabs to spawn proof because it was easier, quicker, and kind of cheaper. I'm also going to capture a piglin to use his bait in the center so the wither skeletons actually fall down. I also decided for this farm that I was going to be using my sword to do all the killing because I had looting. I know you can use a tamed wolf, but that takes longer and isn't as fun. After getting my supplies, I leveled up a librarian and got eight name tags, which is something I meant to do forever ago. And yes, I bought eight name tags just in case anything happened to the first piglin. I speak from experience with the stupid endermites. I made some swiftness two potions so I can get there faster and I ran all the way back through my long tunnel. And guess how long this took? I used four potions of swiftness two and it took me five minutes to run this tunnel. Five minutes. Good thing I will not be heading here and back that often. On day 393, I made a ton of buttons and began spawn proofing the nether fortress. This should take almost no time in comparison to the last fortress incident. Anyways, it looks like it's already working. I found this horde of withy boys and one of them already dropped me a skull. And right after that, another one dropped me a skull. I have to be super careful during this though because the more I spawn proof, the more dangerous the areas that I haven't spawn proof will start becoming. I mean, just look at all these mans. And one of them gave me a third skull. It took me until day 396 to finish spawn proofing and uh pretty sure this giant pile of mobs says that it works also the endermen that pick up blocks don't despawn which is kind of a problem during this whole process i already got 13 wither skulls which is pretty pog after that i built the netherrack spawning platform for the wither skeletons and i added a center point with some trap doors so i could trap a piglin after this i went back to get a piglin from the bastion that i had built under and i stumbled upon their gold stash and got 16 free blocks of gold i then led one of them all the way back to the farm and i got him in the trap only for a stupid blaze to shoot him and burn him to death. Why? On day 397, I went back to grab another piglin and I drug this man all the way back to the farm only for him to immediately be killed by a wither skeleton. Yeah, it was uh, safe to say that I kind of screwed up in making this functional so soon. I mean, look at all these skeletons. Also, I was out of fire resistance and the blazes are complete jerks. Luckily, I do have the supplies here to make some more fire resistance potions though. After fixing up the wither farm area, I went back to get another piglin and they were super hard to find but I did loot a chest in the bastion which had a free lodestone in it. After searching some more I found a man and I slowly let him down to the path until he died from fall damage. I am cursed or so I thought. On the way back to the farm I heard the distinct sound that piglins make so I dug up and found a pile of mans. I drug this one back and led him into the trap and voila success is finally here. I used my name tag to name him Twitch Prime which is totally something you should go do at twitch.tv slash pain domination where i will soon be streaming weekly <coughs> casual plug anyways look at all these wither skellies on day 398 i finished the killing zone downstairs or at least for now because i was running out of time in these 100 days and this farm definitely works pretty well i could definitely improve the spawn rate in the future by spawn proofing the basalt areas and the warped forest but for now this works perfectly fine this certainly isn't the most efficient wither farm but i hated this process and it works well enough to say that it's all good for me something is definitely wrong with the hostile mob cap though because my spawns are not that consistent at all. Sometimes I get a lot, sometimes I don't get that many, and those damn endermen with blocks do not despawn and they are everywhere. But I did end up with 24 wither skulls which means it was time to go kill 8 withers in the end. On day 399 I gathered my freshly severed skulls and some soul sand and I went back to the end. It was time to kill 8 withers. This wither enderman killing room is literal heaven. I got 6.5 stacks of wither roses and 8 juicy nether stars from these boys and to celebrate 400 days i killed more endermen until i hit level 100 today was a very successful day also somehow i was missing a fence here can endermen steal fences there's no way right on day 400 that's right the big 400 i crafted my eight new beacons and i now have 10 beacons after making the beacons i went over to the spot in between the horse stable and the farmhouse and i decided that for the rest of my beacons i wanted them to be underground so they didn't take up too much space and i could have the buff no matter where I was in the compound. And I also decided that this beacon specifically was going to have purple and yellow stained glass for my awesome channel colors. And I was going to try to turn it into a fountain because I mean, I can, I don't know. And after building the fountain, it looks okay. 
okay, I guess. It's not the worst. I feel like for what I was going for, it had to be a much larger fountain, but I don't know. I might end up changing it in the future. It's pretty hard when there's beacons underneath though, because you can only use transparent blocks overhead so the beacons aren't covered. Anyways though, I kind of missed the sunset, so uh, yeah, no sunset for you, I guess. Oh, and yeah, I know, I kind of just left the farmer zombie villagers hanging. I wanted to have them done way before this 100 days ended, but I guess that will be a project for 500 days. On day 401, I was a ready boy. I had a list of things to do for these 100 days and places to be, because if you haven't noticed, it's uh, it's been a while since we've been inside of this world. One huge thing that I didn't finish in the last 100 days that I really wanted to finish was transforming my farmer's association into a capitalistic machine. But I needed a lot more gold and apples to do that, so my first huge project would be to build myself a gold farm on the nether roof. But first, I needed some things. I was going to need magma blocks and some turtle eggs. So I grabbed some bone meal and bones, not like I was low on them or anything. And I flew over to my nearby turtle friend that I trapped like 300 days ago, and I began by harvesting a bunch of seagrass with the shears. Also, quick little fact, I didn't even know you needed shears until now. I may or may not have tried to use silk touch on this. Anyways, after this, I realized something was off. I only had one sea turtle here, and I needed two of them to Detroit smash and make some eggs. So I had to continue searching for a place with two turtles, and not that far away, I actually found a bunch of them right before it became nighttime. I lured these boys together and I set them up on a nice date while I got out my bed and went to sleep for the night. On day 402, the second turtle tried to break up with his new lover, but I tracked him down and I drug him back to the future site of TurtleCon 2021. After this, I spent the next day and a half clearing out the sand and dirt and building them a walled-in area, plus adding some torches, and I even gave them this nice tropical pond in the center. My turtles gotta live in style. While waiting for these boys to lay more eggs, I was googling some stuff about turtles, and they apparently take four to five nights to hatch. So I was like, uh, no. So I picked up some of their eggs with Silk Touch, and I just brought them back home. The new plan was to make a turtle enclosure by my house, so that way they'll always be inside of loaded chunks, and I can become the best turtle farmer that I was born to be. So I collected all my things and I flew home for the night. I spent day 404 struggling to find a place for my turtle habitat. You could say my building plans were not found. Come on, that was a good joke. Please somebody get that joke. Anyways, I finally thought of where I want the turtles to go and I began swapping out the dirt for some sand. And while doing this, a trident boy kept sniping me from the ocean. So I jumped in and smacked him up some and this boy dropped me a trident and a piece of gold. I feel like this is going to be a pretty lucky 100 days. On days 405 through 406, I kept gathering spruce wood and I began building the wall for my turtle enclosure. I also tried to build my first palm tree, except I ran out of jungle leaves and my last sapling turned into a greedy tree that didn't want to drop any more saplings. So I couldn't make a second tree and just like my ocean world, I was now out of jungle wood. After this, I fenced in the water part of the beach and I placed all of my turtle eggs and now I just had to wait four to five days for these to hatch. Not gonna lie, I didn't expect getting turtle eggs to take this long. On day 407, I had a weird feeling that the baby turtles would escape through the fences, so I googled it and apparently baby turtles can swim through fences. So I replaced all of the ocean fence with a wall similar to the rest, and after this, I replaced all the torches with some tiki torches to kind of match the tropical aesthetic that I was going for. Now all I needed was more jungle leaves, and the eggs are also starting to crack. The babies cometh soon. I spent the next three days working on making the path around my base way more natural and creative. I made some custom trees and I really stepped up my block diversity game by using gravel, coarse dirt, and podzel. I also learned that apparently if you bone mill some grass and flowers onto the ground and then you bone mill a birch sapling inside of them, then the birch tree has a chance of spawning with a bee's nest on it. By the end of these few days, my turtles started to hatch and just look at these cute, adorable little dudes. All hail the tiny turtle overlords. On day 411, I began working on my farmer villagers that I started like a month ago. And I killed their zombies off because a bunch of people in the comments suggested that I tried locking them into farmers first. So I tested out maxing them out and then curing them in a creative world and it only took three cures. So it turns out I might have been curing villagers the hard way this entire time. Right after this, it was time for some long awaited capitalism. I traded string, sticks, and feathers with all of my Fletcher army and I mended all of my tools and my elytra in the process. All of this capitalism netted me a profit of 40 41 emerald blocks. Omega Pog. Now that my money stuffed pockets were more stuffed, I went to check on my turtles and some of the babies were missing. And there were two adults that 
somehow escaped. And then I found it. One of the walls that I built was one block too short, so these mans were escaping. So I pushed this dude back in and I increased the wall size. Now that my escape artist turtles were imprisoned, I spent the night placing sea lanterns underwater around my base to really make the ocean pop. Plus, it also stops drowned from spawning. On day 412, I gathered some carrots and maxed out one of my cured zombie villagers. While doing this, I also solved my lack of apples. I guess all of those trees I killed died for nothing. But sometimes it just be that way though. I maxed out my second villager and got a ton more apples and golden carrots from him. Plus, while leveling them, I heard the classic Arr! and I, I can't do the llama noise. I'm not even going to attempt it. But yeah, you get the picture. It was a wandering trader. So I went upstairs and they didn't have that much. So I deleted them from existence. Silly trader. This isn't the ocean only world. I don't need you. After this, I grabbed eight stacks of gold from my gold chest and I crafted 64 golden apples and damn does it feel good to finally have golden and apples. The great apple struggle is almost over. Later that night, I led two zombies onto the platform so I could reinfect these two farmers a couple of times, and then I can turn the rest of these zombies into more farmers. On day 413, I cured my two maxed farmers for the first time, and then I cured every one of those other zombie villagers, and I killed all of their zombies so I could individually level each of them up as a farmer before I continued to infect them. After this, I went to go feed my pet ninja turtles and just look at all these mans just chilling in the corner, probably plotting my downfall. I spent the rest of the day leveling up all of my farmers, and I cured my two home slices for a third time, and when they cured, their trades were down to one emerald each. So I guess I found the more efficient way to rob villagers. On day 414, I AFK'd around my base while my turtles continued to grow, until nighttime when I brought my two finished farmers inside and I lured them into their prisons by using beds. And of course, they would not cooperate in the slightest because villagers are the worst, plain and simple. But I did manage to get them both into their beds, and after this, I spent the whole night luring zombies to infect the rest of my farmers association, and this process took all the way until sunrise. On day 415, I began the day by curing all of my second round of farmers for the first time. After that, I commenced in some more beautiful capitalism. Just look at the sheer quality of these stunks. Somebody please call the spiffing Brett, he needs to see this. All of this capitalism got me a whopping 65 more emerald blocks. And by the time I was done trading, all of my farmers were infected again, so it was round two of their vaccine. I, I mean cures. And after this, I traded with my god tier farmers for some more juicy apples and spicy golden carrots. Be gone, inefficient chicken. I only consume gold. I spent the rest of the day casually organizing my inventory and checking on farms, and damn, just look at the creeper and spider farm go. Also, look at my iron farm. That's somehow less efficient than the one in my ocean only world. Either way, I can't complain because it's producing me mad stonks. On day 416, I started off the day by curing my zombie villagers for the third time. I then spent a lot of this day just kind of AFKing by the villagers because I wasn't sure if they would all be ready to go after they cured and I was pretty much right. Some villagers were ready with one emerald trades, but some of them still had trades for four, so I killed some of the zombies and I reinfected the others. Only one of the villagers was ready, so I brought him inside and I gave him a bed. That way when it becomes nighttime, he'll go into his little hole. I continued AFKing and as each of the remaining villagers cured, I checked their trades and I killed their zombies. Throughout the night, I moved each and every farmer into their new home and I now have seven fully decked out farmers who will be my infinite source of golden carrots. Only problem is I now needed two more farmers and then I could move on to my cartographers so I could start hunting down some woodland mansions. Now that my villagers were finally fixed, I went back to check on my booming turtle population and look at these boys go! Turtle empire is almost complete. On day 417, I prepared myself for something that I have been wanting to do forever now. I wanted to go back to the end and loot the end cities and grow my wealth by stuffing my inventory with countless diamond tools, armor sets, and and I also needed some more shulkers. Plus, I would kind of like some backup elytras. I mean, just in case, you know? So I got my bottles of enchanting for repairs, and I traded for another mending and unbreaking three books so I could enchant a backup elytra on the spot. After this, I went into the nether, and I jumped through the end portal, and I enderpearled through the outer lands portal. 
not that far from my spawn, there was an end city that I apparently just never found. I mean, I don't know. I remember this being an awful experience. So it's kind of great to know that I could have just walked like 10 feet. And yeah, I don't want to talk about it. While looting my way through this place, I found three different chest rooms and the loot was absolutely busted. I found a bunch of OP diamond items, 10 diamonds, and I am already up to 20 shulker shells. I was in the end looting all the way until day 430 and I found so, so, so much dank loot that I figured you'd enjoy a good old fashioned killing and looting montage. After my long looting journey, I returned home and put all of my loot into one chest to see what I really got and wow. I didn't even loot for that long and I ended up with 35 diamonds, 4 elytras, 4 dragon heads, and tons of diamond tools and armor that all had OP enchants. I also came back with 41 shulker boxes and not gonna lie, I kinda started skipping a lot of the shulkers towards the end because my water glitched out and disappeared and I didn't really want to deal with them. After getting home from the end on day 431, I took 18 shulkers and made them purple and yellow for the channel color aesthetic and the next day I took off on a journey to find a desert and an ice biome so I could begin my new projects which are going to be a juicy nether hub complete with some beautiful ice boat travel to get to my wither farm. Before leaving I enchanted a second elytra just in case and I named it Sky High because I couldn't really think of a better name and for some reason the Disney movie Sky High kinda just came to mind. My mind is an enigma. Now that I was properly prepared, I took off over the ocean in search of a desert and surprisingly only 5 minutes of flying there was one on the other side of the ocean. And this was here the entire time so I didn't have to go and randomly find crappy deposits of sand to I don't want to talk about it, okay? While inside the desert, I also found a desert temple and there was a clean two diamonds inside one of the chests. While here, I also realized that I brought way too many shulkers for this, but I mean, it is what it is. Anyways, cue sand montage. This was the most successful sand montage to date because I ended up with five shulkers full of sand and this took all the way until the end of day 433. On day 434 I flew back out in a different direction and after about eight minutes of flying I found an ice biome. It really looks like my luck is going to be great during these 100 days. I spent the next four days mining the ice and sleeping through the night so I didn't have to deal with mobs and I even had to repair my pickaxe with the backup bottles of enchantments that I had brought just for the occasion. Now that I have big projects like this it looks like I'm finally going to have to put Put all of those backup diamond tools to use. After this, I flew back home and I ended up with five shulkers full of packed ice plus some extra. Later that night, I checked on my turtle farm and these boys popped off. Look at them all. They're beautiful, my children. On day 439, I grabbed some potions of fire res and dove into the water to collect the last ingredient to bake the perfect gold farm, magma blocks. I found a couple of easy veins and even got some free gold that I guess no longer matters. I ended up with more than 12 stacks of spicy blocks, so I went back to the overworld to begin laying out what I needed for the farm. While gathering supplies, I realized that I was going to need two to three times more magma blocks than I had originally thought. And I also did not have that much magma cream and it wasn't really worth wasting it, so I brewed some more potions of spicy water resistance and I went to sleep for the day, so that way in the morning I could repair my pickaxe with some beautiful capitalism. Does my pickaxe being so close to breaking stress you out? 
Good. I begin day 440 with what you've all been waiting for, some more beautiful capitalism. I traded sticks, string, and feathers with all of my boys, and I guess me infecting them wrong is finally kicking in because their trades are slowly going back up, and that is not okay. I traded with these mans four times in a row, and by the time I was all done, all of my tools were shiny and new, and I had enough emeralds to make 85 blocks of emerald. Not to flex or anything, but just look at this chest. Now that my pick was fixed, it was back to the nether to collect some more magma. I got kind of lucky and I struck magma gold underneath the first bastion that I actually looted during the first 100 days. After coming back from the nether, I paid a visit to the turtles by turning some of their eggs into orphans because I stole them. Now that I had the magma and turtle eggs that I would need, I dumped them into the shulkers and I almost had a full shulker of magma, which ironically just happens to be a little more than what I was going to need. I spent the rest of the night putting the supplies for the farm into the shulkers so I would have everything that I needed while on the nether roof. I have a shulker full of magma, one full of glass, and one full of everything else I would need minus more warped trap doors, cactus, and honey blocks, which means I now needed to make my long planned bee movie farm. Prepare yourself for the bee puns. On day 441, I grabbed my sky high elytra and I took off towards my desert so I could get the cactus I needed for the gold sword destroying part of the gold farm's auto sorter. After landing and breaking the cactus I needed, I had this crazy idea to steal this entire pool of lava. So I opened up my beacon box and I used the iron blocks to make a ton of buckets. I filled each and every one of these buckets with lava from the pool until it was almost gone and I ended up with two full shulkers and an additional nine buckets of lava. That is 63 buckets of lava. So now that I had an unnecessary amount of lava and I had my cactus, it was time to head home. That is until I got distracted by a nearby desert temple. I heard a skeleton inside and of course there was a creeper hanging out waiting and watching. I looted the four chests and they had one golden apple and a bunch of junk. No god apple for me I guess. After this I spent the night flying home as fast as my cat when he has zoomies. Here's a picture of him by the way. Isn't he such a beautiful and handsome boy? If you follow me on Twitter I totally post more pictures of him. And you should totally mention in the comments down below just how cute he is because his ego needs to be raised. On day 442, before going into the nether for warped wood, I realized my axe only had efficiency 4 still. Ew. So I went over to my librarians to buy an efficiency 5 book. After that, I popped it onto Orphan Obliterator so he can obliterate orphans at twice the speed. And chop trees too, I guess. So I grabbed some potions of swiftness and I set off on my 5 minute long nether run. I am so looking forward to replacing this with an ice bridge. After finally getting to the warped forest near my wither skeleton farm, I went on my nether tree killing rampage. While here, I also collected every shroom light I saw because they could probably look good in a future build, maybe. While running around the forest, I found tons of endermen that were holding items. These guys are the reason why my wither skeleton farm isn't at max efficiency yet, because they don't freaking despawn. And honestly, I really don't want to have to spawn proof this biome too. I have flashbacks. Now that I had what I came for, I went to kill some wither boys because I mean, honestly, why not? I ran all the way here and once I spawn proof the warped forest, this farm will be god tier. But for now, it's just pretty good, I guess. While sitting here grinding the wither skeletons, I did end up getting three more skulls. So I guess this trip wasn't entirely a waste of time. And after spending another five minutes straight running all the way back to my nether portal, it ended up being day 445. On day 446, I set out with my elytra to a nearby forest to search for beehives, which I thought would be easy. See what I did there? I warned you about the bee puns. Anyways, the beehives were few and far between, and when I did find them, I struggled to get them into the nests. I learned that you could use campfires to solve that, but I didn't have any dark oak wood on me. Overall, I was pretty unlucky finding hives, that is, until day 400. In 49. On day 449, I hit the mother load. I found a flower biome and there were beehives full of bees everywhere. So I went around the biome capturing every bee I could find inside of their nests. While I was here, I may have also decimated a field of flowers to take home with me. I mean, it's not a big deal, right? While continuing to search around, I found this majestic looking ruined portal that had a tree in it and no god apple. And to be honest, I'm not even sure if god apples spawn in ruined portals to be honest, but I'm sure you will all let me know in the comments, because you always do. On day 450, I began flying back home with all of my bees. However, mid-flight, I decided that while I was out, I would look for another jungle biome so I could get more jungle wood for the turtle enclosure and some cool tropical builds that I had in mind. While flying around, I found countless village after 
village after village and I told myself I would not stop and steal all their hay. But I literally flew over like six villages in a row. So uh, yeah, you could you could probably see how long that lasted. So I stopped at every other village along the way and I started stealing their bells and all of their hay. So much for minimizing exploration until the 1.18 caves come out. Am I right? While exploring, I even stopped by an illager outpost and I stole their cool banners and some dark oak for campfires in case I found any more bees. And just look at this absolute pile of these boys. Control, Alt, Delete. Oh, and I even freed this iron golem like the good Samaritan that I definitely am. On day 451, I had finally found the jungle I was looking for, and this didn't take nearly as long as last time. So, I got straight to work putting nature in its place, except a wandering trainer decided to interrupt me. I checked who he was subscribed to, and I was not on the list, so I banned him from YouTube. And life. Anyways, this time I was far more prepared before I left. I gathered over 4 stacks of jungle wood and 20 jungle saplings. I spent the rest of the night flying home and I ended up with 12 new beehives full of bees, which totals 20 including the one I have in the item frame. On day 452, I gathered all the supplies for a honey farm and I crafted a metric ton of glass bottles. Now that I was prepared, I grabbed the shulker and looked for a place to actually build the thing. I know I could put it in the end and they would never stop working because it was never nighttime, but I also barely ever go to the end, so overall it would be much less productive in the long run. So after looking around my base for a bit, I decided that the perfect place for a bee farm would be the downstairs area of my farmhouse. So I began laying out the collection system and uh, let's just say I ran into a ton of issues because the farm I was using was going to be too tall to fit and overall it was just a lot more time and effort than it ended up being worth. So instead I went with plan B, see what I did there, and I built it outside. So cue B building montage. By the time I was done building the bare bones bee farm, it had already started working. I had already made some honey and all the bees were busy writing the script to Bee Movie 2, the beequel. <laughs> That's pretty great, not gonna lie. The overall process of building this farm and then tearing it down and moving it and rebuilding it took all the way until day 453. Except the day wasn't over, so I wanted to build a nice bee hut around the farm. That is, until I noticed that I basically had zero of any type of wood besides jungle. Ew. While lighting up the top of the bee farm, I realized that it was becoming night, so instead of smacking trees in the middle of a creeper minefield, I decided to just sleep instead. On day 454, I flew out to the nearby forest to continue my grudge against Minecraft nature. For the bee hut, I want to use regular and stripped oak along with maybe some spruce wood. While increasing my carbon footprint, I thought of a future farm that I definitely needed, an auto tree farm. You can make them pretty easily with TNT dupers, and since I have plenty of bone meal to keep growing the trees, they would be way more efficient than doing what I'm doing now. Most of day 455, working on the surrounding building that covered all of the mess behind the farm. And it was looking okay. I kind of wanted to add a roof with an overhang, kind of like the one I did for my horse pen, but I was now realizing that I definitely should have built this further back from the path between the turtle farm and the bee farm. How unbelievable of me. Okay, fine, fine, I'll stop. Just don't leave the video, please. I spent all of day 456 adding a roof to the bee farm and adding some extra 
extra touches to it, and it turned out way better than I had thought it would. I even put a staircase inside of it so that way I could use it to get up to the glass bottle system. On the next day, while I was waiting for the bee farm to produce enough honey, I decided that I would finish the paths around it so that way it would blend in more with the world better. That is, if my shovel wasn't almost broken. So before working around the bee farm, it was off to some more beautiful capitalism so I could mend up my shovel. During this beautiful session of capitalism, the only thing I had to trade was string because I keep forgetting to craft all of my bamboo into sticks. Or at least that's what I keep telling myself. Also speaking of bamboo, I added a lever to the farm so it was no longer automated because it was generating so much bamboo that the chests were always full and it was literally lagging my game. I spent the rest of the day gardening around the bee barn, which is what I was going to call the new bee farm, trademark. And on day 457, it was finally finished, at least for now. I also added another custom tree, which I think turned out okay. I mean, I don't know to be honest, building custom trees is pretty difficult. Anyways, now that this was mostly done, I checked on the honey production and there was more than enough that I needed to make the gold farm. So I crafted all of the honey and I got 14 blocks of honey. On day 458, in preparation for my gold farm, I made a creative world and I began testing ways to break bedrock. I tried two different methods and after so, so, so many fails, I finally got it to work. However, just to be super careful, I'm going to bring enough materials to make another portal so I don't, you know, get stuck on the roof forever and lose my world. So I went back to my world and I crafted a ton of TNT and everything else that I needed and I was now prepared to screw up a lot. I mean, just look at this overkill shulker. So I went back to the nether and I dug up to a spot where I could see the highest point of bedrock and I ender pearled through. Now that I was up here, I marked the block I wanted to break and I set up my bedrock breaker. And just like that, I had done it. And you could probably tell, but I was pretty damn excited about it. This took way less tries than I was expecting. And I also realized that as I was doing it, both the trapdoor and the pistons and even the lever didn't get destroyed by the TNT. So I kind of didn't need to make a ton of them. But you know what? It's all good. I'll hoard them until another day when I finally need them. Also, a huge pro tip to mastering how to do this for yourself. When you're underneath the trapdoor and trying to place the piston, aim for the lighter purple spots like I did. It makes this way more efficient. On day 459, I chose a direction on another roof to run in so that way I could find a nether waste biome to put my gold farm in. I ran in a straight line while placing torch breadcrumbs so that way I could find my way home just in case. When finally finding the nether waste biome, I realized that I had forgot scaffolding. So I grabbed my elytra and I flew all the way back to the broken bedrock and damn, I actually ended up going pretty far. After getting back to my house, I made an excessive amount of scaffolding totally on purpose and not by mistake because I don't make those. And now that I had all the supplies I needed, I went back to the nether and began building the gold farm. For this farm, I used Mysticats designed and I learned that I didn't even need the honey blocks because they were an optional way to switch between an auto farm and me manually killing them. So I guess I got the bees for nothing. For now that is. Anyways, I began by building the hopper looting platform. I set up a triple sorter that would sort rotten flesh, golden nuggets, and gold bars into chests and destroy the golden swords. You may be wondering why I need rotten flesh? And the answer is simple, cleric villagers. I can feed them rotten flesh for some more juicy emeralds. Now that my sorting system was ready, I built the pit of death, where I could watch all the zombie piglins fall to their doom. After this, I built the first magma platform for them to spawn on, and I built a pole in the middle of trap doors, and I put turtle eggs inside every three blocks that will bait piglins to transform into their drops. After that, I filled in the remaining floors, and I added a large glass box to the top to increase pack spawns. And lastly, I made an AFK skybox at build limit and just like that my gold farm was officially complete. This whole process took absolutely forever. I finished this at the end of day 472. I also maybe finished this at about 4 a.m. in real life. I don't want to talk about it. On days 473 through 476 now that my farm was good to go I decided to test this bad boy out. So I AFK'd in the sky chamber for one hour straight to see just how much loot I would get. Q montage. <laughs>
After AFKing for a full hour, I flew back down to check on my loot, and I guess I forgot to spawn proof a couple of blocks. So there was an angry boy here, who then fell off the ledge. Oh well. I checked on my chests, and well, yeah, the sorter broke. I guess because one of the pieces of glass that I broke up top while finishing the platform fell into the sorter, it stopped it from working because I also used glass for the sorter. Oops. Anyways, after fixing the sorting system, I crafted all of my Wendy's spicy nuggets into gold bars, and in an hour, this farm produced nine and a half stacks of gold ingots, which is pretty good, not gonna lie. The cool thing about this farm is that if I wanted to in the future, I could also expand it or just add extra farms around it and spawn even more piglins and just produce absolute crazy stonks when it comes to gold. So after this, I packed all of my loot away in my shulker boxes and I flew back home and I ended up getting back to the overworld the next day and it was officially time to organize all of my crap before I can move on to the next project. And to put this into perspective, this is how much rotten flesh I had before, and this is how much I have now. I have almost two full, full chests of rotten flesh for just one hour of waiting. Just imagine all of the emeralds inside of this chest. Anyways, I spent the rest of this day cleaning out my shulkers. And I mean, just look at all these shulkers. I even still had the shulkers left over that were full of the ice I collected like 20 days ago. On day 478, I went over to my overflowing bamboo farm and I began converting all of the bamboo to sticks. And this process took absolutely forever. I actually gave up on this because I had already filled all of these shulkers and I still had tons of bamboo left. I was like, where is all this bamboo coming from? And then I realized that every single hopper minecart that was going on the tracks also had nine additional stacks of bamboo and they just kept dumping them back into the chests over and over again. I am so glad that I disabled the automatic harvesting because holy crap. So at the beginning of day 479, it was time for some beautiful capitalism. I gathered all of my tools and my elytras and I repaired them with the XP from all of this fine capitalism. After repairing my gear and tools and after finishing up the trades, I ended up with another stack into one emerald blocks. Now that my things were fixed, I didn't really have much else to do this day, so I went back to my turtle farm and I planted a huge tree that surprisingly ended up looking pretty nice. On day 480, I got the inspiration to really touch up my base some more because there were so many parts that were unfinished. So I started off by adding some wood pillars with redstone lamps and daylight sensors to the dock by my farmhouse. And surprisingly, this made it look 10 times better. While doing this, I also got so much more inspiration. So I spent the night tearing down the kind of overkill emerald and blackstone fence around the water and I replaced it with a small dock border. After filling this in, I added some wood supports with redstone lamps and daylight sensors, and this ended up looking crazy good. I was becoming so much more happy with this area in comparison to what it was before. After finishing the dock all the way to where the creeper and spider farm was, I spent the next two days working on the path thing around my horse barn and the beacon fountain. And honestly, I am getting so good at this natural look stuff. I really hope you all like seeing this kind of unique building in the series, because I mean, just look at how cozy this is. Although the fountain kind of stands out a lot more now, I mean, I, I don't know what to do with the fountain, to be honest. On day 484, while my inspiration was still flowing, I went down to my ex lava pool to get a ton of obsidian for my next mini project. And yes, I could go to the end, but I don't feel like setting up a beacon there, and my current beacon's already covering this area, so this process was much faster. Anyways, this took most of the day, and I settled with about two stacks of obsidian for now. On day 485, I gathered the rest of the resources that I needed for the mini project, and I'm guessing you probably know exactly what this is going to be by now based on the thumbnail. A nether portal sword shrine. And yes, this isn't entirely original as I did use some designs that I saw online as references, but mine was going to be much different. So now that I had the supplies, I began building the frame for the portal sword. And yes, cue building montage. Bombs. 
Now let me see you go off like a bomb. And of course, to show off after finishing the basic outline of the sword, I had to do an MLG water bucket on the way down. After this, I made some soul fire torches and I crafted them into soul fire lanterns, which I haven't really used until now. Anyways, after adding the lights to the sword portal frame, it was looking pretty 10 out of 10. Plus now, hopefully no creepers would spawn up there and destroy all of my hard work by dive bombing me. This process took until the end of day 488. On day 489, while working out the design for the base around the portal, I saw one of the rarest spawns in all of Minecraft in the distance. It was a full diamond armor skeleton. I panicked because I needed a name tag, but I knew if I ran back to my base, it would probably despawn before this. So I began running towards it, and then just like it came, it despawned before my eyes. I didn't know how long it had been spawned in out there, but the pain I now felt was a measurable. I needed that guy. And now, just like my dad, he was gone to get milk and will never come back. Anyways, with that disappointment looming over me, I finished building the platform for the portal. I added some bonfires and some cool lamps to each side to really add the aesthetic I was going for. This project took me until day 493 because I was very, very indecisive while building. On day 494, I went down to my mine and I broke the old nether portal so I could finally link the new one. After that, I went back up to my new beautiful portal with a flint and steel and I lit it. It all led up to this moment. I went through the portal and it worked. It didn't glitch out and go to another portal or make some random new portal miles away. So I'm lucky. I mean, you got to be super careful because Minecraft portals are an enigma. So now that I was in the nether, I went back through the portal to see if it would take me back out at the exact spot and it linked up perfectly to the overworld. Almost 500 days later and I finally no longer have to go 50 levels down on a ladder just to to go to the nether every time. Anyways, now that this is done, let's just sit back and take a look at it in all of its glory. It's so pretty, it is beautiful. Now that my nether portal was done, I spent the rest of the night adding some more paths and nature around the entrance because it really makes the world feel a lot more comfortable, you know? I even decided to grab three more stacks of prismarine and I went around the ocean lighting up the floor some more so that way my base would just look so much better at night. Like prismarine at the bottom of your ocean floor makes or breaks an ocean build. I'm just saying. It is so pretty. And this place looks gorgeous with shaders. That is if I could get more than 30 FPS with shaders, even after upgrading my PC. <laughs> On day 495, I wanted to update my long ignored bridge that connected to my iron farm and my creeper farms, and I didn't have enough wood to do it. So it was back to some good old fashioned deforestation. But don't worry, this time I'm growing all of the trees that I then chopped down, which means I guess in a way I was now the dad who left to get milk and didn't come back. Anyways, now that I had forsaken my tree children, I began spacing out wood supports for the bridge. I know, it's crazy, right? Absolutely none of my buildings have had supports throughout the entire 500 days, except for my house. So now that I had the support spaced out, I spent the rest of the day and most of day 496 finishing the underneath area of the bridge, and it really helps close off my little bay area that I have going on here. This place is looking gorgeous. It's starting to look kind of like a village, which is not what I was going for, but I really like the aesthetic. I spent days 497 through 498 building the roof to the bridge out of spruce wood stairs and stone brick. After running out of stone, I went back down to my mine and I struck some diamonds while mining stone. I did say in the beginning of this video that these would be a lucky 100 days, I think. I actually don't remember at this point. Anyways, I had found eight diamond ore, which is pretty pog. Now that I had my stone and some free diamondes, I spent the rest of the night finishing the roof of the bridge, and this thing really brings together the whole area, and it makes it super cozy to look at. I mean, just look at it from the ocean view. Plus, there are no longer any porches when walking across it because I replaced them all with classy hanging lanterns. On day 499, now that the bridge was looking nice, it was finally time to fix up the iron farm area since, I mean, let's be honest, I kind of just let it sit here for a long AF time. So I finished the porch area that I could use to watch the iron golem suffer. I mean, come on, what else did you expect me to use this for? I also finished the staircase so I could properly close in the chest room, and I blocked off that unsightly redstone sorter. Things were looking good in the kingdom of pain domination. On day 500, I was kind 
kind of just walking around admiring the work that I had accomplished for these 100 days. And then something caught my eye on the very top of the creeper farm. There was a freaking wandering trader up there. So I got out my elytra and I flew up there to check his trades. And big surprise, this man had nothing. I mean, I kind of already have everything anyways so i concocted a huge massive five head idea so i slowly plunged him to his death on my newly built bridge and now i had two of his friends that weren't mad at me so i crafted two boats and i plopped them down and pushed them both into them and one by one i went skydiving with them and i parked them next to my cow big mac after this i got three name tags and i named big mac and i named the two new members of the family rem and rom because i mean we were reference. If only I could dye these two pink and blue, that would be absolutely perfect. Let me know in the comments which anime these two are from. Also, I just have to point this out. While we're talking about Rem and Rom, Rem is the ultimate waifu and I will fight you over it. On the first day, I ignored the pile of full shulkers that I had laying around my base, and instead, I began preparing for the next huge project. Today, I was going to drain the ocean monument that I had turned into a guardian farm behind my base. So the first thing I did was grab the three tridents that I had laying around in my chests for literal years, and I grabbed some enchanted books for them. After grabbing the tridents, I began dying more shulkers to finish filling up my ender chest because I am lazy, and I did not want to clean out the 20 plus boxes that were laying around. And as I was was doing that i kid you not it started thunderstorming so i grabbed the trident that had loyalty and channeling and i went out on my first ever mob head hunt while out here i failed a couple of times but i finally charged a creeper and had him blow up a zombie and i got my first zombie head for the collection right after this i charged a second creeper and lured him into the water and he blew up another zombie and a skeleton and i got a second zombie head but for some reason the skeleton head was nowhere to be found so i'm guessing he probably drowned first what a guy. Anyways, it conveniently stopped raining right after this, so I guess the two new mob heads were a pretty good haul for my first ever supercharged creeper hunt. And apparently during the thunderstorm, there was another set of skeleton riders that spawned. And after killing them, I got two more skeleton horses to add to the stable. So I went back, grabbed some saddles and a lead, and I brought them back home. And I, I guess I have four skeleton horses now. Good day. And if you're wondering why all the footage is in third person, well, um... Let's just say that I recorded a black screen because my recording software was looking for Stardew Valley instead of Minecraft. On day 502, I went over to my trading hall and began buying books for my two OP tridents. After this, I began rerolling another librarian until he got impaling for the tridents, and this man wanted 64 emeralds a book. Yikes. But I was not about to sit there rerolling for the next two days, so I said screw it, I'll take 20. After this, I went back to my house and I maxed out the enchantments on both of my tridents. I renamed the one with ripped from the yeet stick to the yeeter deleter and i also renamed the channeling trident to the creeper conductor and not gonna lie every time i spell anything in minecraft in the in-game font it makes me second guess if i've spelled it or not I, ha I had to google search the word conductor and i spelled it right anyways after all of the time that i've had these tridents i've finally actually done something with them so you should totally be proud of me on day 503 i started the day off with some scrumptious capitalism to repair my creeper conductor trident after it was repaired i I mended my incomplete god bow and just like that I had blew through all of my levels which I know it doesn't matter but not gonna lie I kind of missed being level 100 so it was off to the end I went to slap around some ender dudes cue the first montage After swiping away at these men for 15 minutes straight, I decided to leave after hitting level 50 because I had bigger and better things to do in preparation for draining the ocean monument. On day 504, tragedy had struck. I crafted a very ridiculous amount of buckets for milk, and I grabbed some shulkers to put them in, and I headed over to see Big Mac for some milkies. That's a sentence. Anyways, Rem and Rom were gone. I was devastated. And yes, I saw all the comments in the 500 days video that said how I needed to tame them so they wouldn't despawn 
spawn and like at that moment it kind of clicked the reason why jeff the llama stayed with me this entire time was because i had tamed him this was also the exact same reason that i lost the two llamas in the 100 days of ocean video today was a sad day but i mean don't worry rem and rom you will be avenged so anyways i drained every last drop of milk from big mac here and i filled enough buckets with milk to supply me with enough for a single bowl of cereal don't judge me after this, I went back to my farmer's market and I bought a luxurious amount of golden carrots for my adventure, and I threw them all into my care package. Then I made more golden apples, grabbed a bunch of strength 2 potions and a potion of regen, and I organized my inventory so I could go sponge hunting in ocean monuments. On day 505, I took off towards the ocean monument near my house and I dove into the water and broke inside of the bottom. While in here clapping those guardian cheeks, I realized that I forgot to bring doors for air, so I retreated for now. But don't worry, I will be back. I may have just begun using tridents, but I was slapping mans around like a pro. I took down the first elder guardian with ease, and then I kept exploring, and after finding and killing the second one, I took a look in the gold room, and then I noped the hell out of there. There were so many dudes in there that it was unreal. So after steadily clearing out the room, I stole the eight golden blocks, and I continued on to find the final boss room, and once I found it, I banished the final guardian to the doom dimension. Now that all the demons were gone, I spent an unreasonable amount of time looking for the sponge room, and not so big surprise, this monument didn't have one. Great. So I swam out of there with a whopping three sponges. On day 506, I set back out to search for ocean monuments, but instead I found a sunken ship that I haven't found yet. And on top of that, there was a treasure map inside one of the chests. So I hunted down the treasure and inside of the chest, there were two fresh and never frozen diamonds, plus my first heart of the sea. So I guess that means this was going to be one massive loot expedition. And speaking of loot, not far away from where I found that treasure, I had flown over my first ocean monument. So I dove in the water and broke in, except this time things were different because I wasn't planning on redesigning this monument. I didn't care about any of the damages I caused. I swam into the treasure room, cleared out all the mans and took their gold, and then I had found it. My first sponge treasure room. So I grabbed my hoe and there were 30 sponge in here. After looting the sponge, I kept breaking through walls looking for the middle elder guardian and I ran into a second sponge room. And just like that, I had more than a stack of sponge and this was only the first monument. Now that I had what I came here for, I beat up the center elder guardian and I fled from the literal army that had spawned spawned above the monument. And while swimming to a nearby island, I spotted an underwater ravine. And you know what? These hundred days are focused on ocean things, so I thought, why not get distracted, swim down there, and look for some easy diamonds? And what do you know? I actually stumbled upon five diamond ores while down here. Nice. During the sunrise of day 507, I took part in a war with a bunch of drowned, and out of the two trident boys that spawned, they dropped one for me. And of course, I didn't hit record in time for it, so hello comments saying I cheated in something that isn't useful to me. Anyways, while exploring the ocean, I stopped by another sunken ship in the hopes of a treasure map, but I had zero luck, so I just kept going until I hit a desert that had a pretty alluring desert temple in it. So I broke into the floor, dug down to borrow whoever's loot this was, and there were three diamonds inside one of the chests, which is kind of ironic because I'm out here looking for sponges, and all I keep finding are diamonds. Diamond beacon, please. And speaking of a diamond beacon, I found yet another desert temple that was being guarded by a Twitter stan. After taking him out, I dug down to to the loot room and inside two of the chests there were another three diamonds plus a free golden apple and another saddle it was almost like the world wanted me to succeed on day 508, while continuing my search for loot, I decided to stop in a swamp biome because I wanted more diamonds and recently some people in my comments let me know about a shulkercraft video that blew my mind. In some worlds, you can use the clay inside of swamps or rivers to predict where diamonds will spawn. All you have to do is place six blocks away from the center of the clay in the south direction and dig down in the seventh. And if you hit the chunk border before you hit six, then do the same thing on the opposite direction. So I dug down in the first clay patch that I found and I know the footage is dark because I may have forgot torches, but yeah, I hit diamonds. I found me a clean four diamond ore. So I spent the next four days exploiting the witches breeding grounds for diamonds. And you may be asking, why not just put torches in your offhand while doing this so you could see better? Well, this is actually super dangerous. You should never really dig straight down in Minecraft. I mean, just look at this. I found a mine shaft with two creepers waiting for me, watching me, smelling me. Okay, maybe not that last part. 
Anyways, throughout these couple of days, I struck diamond vein after diamond vein after diamond vein, and my handy dandy year to leader helped me leave the water tunnels so much quicker than before. Overall, this process took until day 212, and I ended up with a total of 36 diamond ore, which sounds pretty good, but in comparison to regular mining with beacons, this is significantly less efficient. And on top of that, I've had to sleep each night away, so I didn't have to deal with all the mobs while doing this. So yeah, you shouldn't really do this. But hey, 36 more diamond ore is pretty poggers, am I right? On day 513, I left the swamp and immediately found the village hidden in the flowers, and it had a blacksmith which had pretty much nothing in it. So I did what any man of culture would do, and I stole all of their bells and bales. Not far from the village that I definitely didn't rob, there was also a second village that I also didn't rob. Anyways, I found another ocean while looking for more monuments, and I found another shipwreck, and inside of one of the chests was another treasure map, so I went looking for it. You know, I really do get distracted very easily, don't I? So on day 514, while looking for the first treasure map chest, I flew over another boat that you know I just had to stop by. And what do you know, there was actually a second treasure map inside one of the chests. So I flew by this desert looking for the first treasure chest map, and I found where it was. Except there was another desert temple near it. So I dug up the chest and got another two diamonds in a heart of the sea. And after that, I went over to the desert temple, and these chests were thicker than a Pixar mom. There were diamond and gold horse armor, two diamonds, some gold, and some saddles. After leaving the temple, I set back out and searched the next treasure map, and I found the next location for my crimes against guardians to take place. However, while flying over it, the treasure map started to fill in and it ended up being in a nearby swamp. I dug underwater for the chest and there was a ton of iron, some gold, more diamonds, and a third heart of the sea inside. And now that I had my treasure loot, I flew back to the ocean monument and landed on a nearby mountain to prep my inventory and sleep the night away because there is no way in hell I was going down there without being able to see all the boyos that were waiting to ruin my day, or I guess night. On day 515, I immediately dove into the water and I broke into the ocean monument, and today was going to be a speed run. You montage. By the time I was done destroying the city of Atlantis, it was becoming night, so I landed myself on a nice nearby giant mushroom and I slept out in the stars. After looting the last monument, I set back out for the next four days in search of another. And uh, let me tell you, I am a easily distracted person. I kept stopping at villages and stealing their bells and hay bales. I found an abandoned nether portal with two gold blocks, and I stopped by a bunch of desert temples, and almost every one of them had diamonds inside. In fact, these days were absolutely insane. I found two massive deserts that were full of villages ripe with things to indefinitely borrow, and there were just so, so many more desert temples. And while looting one of those desert temples, I struck super gold. I had finally found my first god apple, and it's safe to say I freaked the hell out. I continued exploring until I found one of the most beautiful environments in Minecraft, a warm ocean. I mean, come on, all of the colorful coral are so vibrant and just gorgeous. That is, until I started destroying them, so I had some to take back to my base. Sorry, Bikini Bottom. While I was flying around the warm ocean and beach biomes, I found a sunken ship with a buried treasure map, and when I dug up the treasure, there was another heart of the sea. And not long after that, I found another one with another map that led me to the same location. It was as if the Flying Dutchman was scamming me to get back for what I had done to Bikini Bottom. 
On day 521, I explored another shipwreck that had a treasure map, and the treasure was conveniently buried right by one of my favorite types of village. And this had me kind of thinking, you know, maybe in the future I can get some non-vanilla villagers for my base. Anyways, the treasure had another heart of the sea and some juicy iron, diamond, and emeralds inside. And after getting the treasure, I explored the village, and they had a pain domination bed inside one of their houses that I stole. Anyways, at this point, it was becoming nighttime, so I used my brand new pain domination edition bed to sleep out under the stars. On days 522 through 524, I set out looking for more ocean monuments, except I ran out of ocean to look in. So I ended up in an ice biome, and while flying above, I ran into a village that I've actually never seen before. It was an ice village. And let me tell you, this place had some major vibes. I loved all of the lanterns and the choices of a superior building wood, and there was even an arctic blacksmith that I didn't even know existed. Anyways, while I was looking around the village, I noticed something looming over the hills in the distance. There was an Illager outpost, and there were three banner boyos, so I went up and deleted them all from existence. And this is where that little light that hangs around out above my massive brain went, ding! Let's do a raid in the nearby village and score some more totems of undying. I mean, at this point, I only had one totem left that wasn't inside of an item frame, and it's in my left hand. And I also may have mentioned making a raid farm literally months ago. So yeah, I was going to do this. So I grabbed my beacon shulker and some building blocks, and I constructed a tier 4 quadruple beacon that for some reason I tried to build the wrong way. You think after all of these beacons that I've built, I would, you know, remember how to build them. But you'd be wrong. So now that I had regen, strength 2, resistance 2, speed 2, and jump boost 1, I was prepared. So I made a crappy sky platform with some stairs that only I could climb, and as the sun was going down, I went to sleep. I needed my rest because tomorrow, there was going to be a war. On day 525, I prepared my inventory with ender pearls and items to make this raid even better, and then I ran into the village to begin the carnage. And this was a level 3 raid, which means it was nothing to mess with. In 200 days of hardcore, I did my first bunch of raids, and they nearly destroyed me. But this, this was going to be much different, because now I was unbelievably OP. So I guess the best way to show you just how well this went would be to do an insane montage q raid shadow ledge I, I mean q raid montage At the end of this montage, it was day 526, and I had gotten 8 Totems of Undying, 4 Saddles, and 8 more Ominous Banners. Plus, I now really wanted to make a raid farm, using that outpost near my base that I had found a couple hundred days ago. And yes, I know, I got very, very distracted at this point. It's almost like I didn't even come out here looking for ocean monuments. So now that I had defeated the tier 3 raid and I had the hero of the village buff, I broke all four of my beacons and cleaned up all of the iron blocks and I set back off towards my house so that way I could actually utilize the buff and not get ripoff prices for all of my stick traders. On day 527, as I was traveling back home, I stumbled across another ocean monument except I had a choice to make this day. If I wanted to go in and explore, I was going to have to sacrifice my hero of the village buff because there is no chance I wouldn't need to drink milk to erase that stupid mining fatigue effect. And, not gonna lie, I was very conflicted, but I had to do what my heart told me. So, instead I flew home so I could make some more money! 
And on the way home, I ran into a Badlands biome that I hadn't seen this part of the map before. So I stopped by an exposed mineshaft full of DC villains, and instead of continuing to risk my life for the possibility of a second god apple from minecart chests that may or may not have even been there, I made the not dumb decision to leave and instead go harass the nearby sand village by stealing their bell and all of their hay bales. So after robbing the village from Tatooine, I set back off towards my base with absolutely zero distractions. Okay, I, I might have lied about that one. I found another desert temple, except apparently someone beat me to this one, and I have no clue who that could have been. Anyways though, while I was here, I noticed my hero of the village timer had started counting down, so I took back off towards my base, and I kid you not, I returned home with only one firework left in my inventory, because the rest were inside of my shulkers. Which... I should probably be more careful about in the future, but I probably won't. On day 528, I woke up like a kid on Christmas Day. I ran over to the village or trading post, filled my inventory with sticks, string, and feathers, and I began the massive amount of capitalism that was about to take place. So I traded with these guys over and over and over and over and over and over. I think you get it. And while doing this, I repaired every tool that I owned back to brand new with mending, and I also gained an absolute buttload of XP. The stonks were absolutely flying in non-stop until one by one, these men started refusing my trades and I guess they couldn't handle the heat. By the end of this beautiful money-making session, I ended up with another stack and 37 emerald blocks. And after those exploits, I placed out all of my shulkers and I began organizing all of the loot that I pulled from our big grand journey. I mean, just look at this beautiful box of stuff. I got a ton of gold, some golden apples, and a god apple, five hearts of the sea, a ton of horse armor and saddles, four stacks of stolen wheat, 23 diamonds, and 49 diamond ores. So I took all the diamond ores and I began placing them out. And honestly, this is one of my favorite moments in all of Minecraft. Just breaking all of the diamond ores that you found from a good mining trip with a fortune three pick. So good. My compliments to the chef. After mining all of the diamond ores, I ended up with a stack and a half. And over Overall, this trip yielded me almost two stacks of diamonds, which meant I now needed to clean up all of these shulkers, which I counted by the way. There's 25 full shulkers of crap just sitting around my base. So this was going to take a while. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot that I also had gotten eight totems from this trip as well. So things were looking pretty good. And overall, cleaning up all of these shulker boxes took until the end of day 500. In 29. On days 530 through 532, I dyed an additional shulker box red and I named it Tools and Totems because my care package shulker was getting real full. After this, I organized the two shulker boxes and my ender chest is now 100% full and it looks like a brand new set of Legos. Anyways, now that my inventory and shulkers were all sorted out, I began the next step of preparation to drain the ocean monument. I was going to need stone bricks for the perimeter, like a lot of stone bricks. The circle I was going to make was going to require 636 blocks per layer just for one circle, just the perimeter. So I went down to my mining area to clear out massive amounts of stone for bricks. And while doing this, I grabbed almost every ore that I found along the way, and I even found some more diamonds. While down here, I also decided to break down the rest of my old nether portal and I covered it over because this place was looking like a complete mess. I was also thinking as another one of my future mega projects, I would like to make this area down here into something cool, like some kind of underground safe haven or something. So during this entire process, these Lord Sticky Boys would not leave me alone. So I decided to take a break from mining and go check to see just how deep the water was around the monument. So that way I knew what I was getting myself into. So on the next day, I swam out to the monument and I began placing blocks from one of the deeper parts of the perimeter to see just how many layers on average there were going to be. And I placed 32 blocks, meaning if the entire ocean floor was equally as deep, this was going to take 32 layers of 636 blocks, which is 20,352 stone bricks, which is 318 stacks that would fit in 11.8 shulker boxes, which, quick maths, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I went back to my base and grabbed 15 shulkers to fill, so that way I had a pretty big margin of error, especially since the ocean floor isn't flat and I did not know what to expect. On day 534, I grabbed my backup silk touch pickaxe and I went to buy Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 5 for my villagers to upgrade it. Except after adding Efficiency 5, it was too expensive and I couldn't add Unbreaking. 
And at that point, I realized I probably could have combined the two books first, then put it on there, but I didn't expect it to be too expensive. Either way, I think the reason this pick is jank was because I had to repair it with diamonds during like the first hundred days of this world ever. So rip good backup pickaxe, I guess. Anyways, after fixing the trashy pickaxe, I went back down to the mine, placed a beacon, and began my long, arduous task of mining 300 plus stacks of stone. Q montage. After sitting in the mines for quite a long time, I may have gotten a little hungry, so I instead went over to my AFK stone farm and I just let my mouse go ham. And while my character was mining away all of that precious stone, I made a reasonable four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I know what you're thinking, and listen here. Alright, that's all I got. You can shame me in the comments. Anyways, while I was feasting on my four peanut butter and jelly Gucci sandwiches, I wasn't paying much attention and I came very, very close to breaking my god pick. Look at this boy! Anyways, by the time it was day 545, I had filled the last of the shulkers and yeah, I know, this process took me like three hours. On day 546, now that I had all of the stone that I would need, I went back down and broke my double beacon and took all of the iron with me. Well, definitely not being interrupted by slimes. Go back to super flat, you heathens. So after breaking the beacon underground and the one above the ground, I placed out all of my shulkers to get my inventory sorted. And after all that mining, I ended up with an absolute pile of ores, including an additional 37 diamond ore. And guess what? You know the drill. Place them all out. And just like the younglings from Star Wars, I one by one removed them from existence. And I ended up with a clean stack in 24 diamondes, which I then added to my chest. And I am now almost up to six stacks of diamonds, which for how much I haven't been going for diamonds, that's actually pretty good. However, I knew that those were rookie numbers, and in the future, I had a plan to get so many more diamonds. Anyways, I went over to my iron farm, and I crafted all of the iron into almost four more stacks of iron, because I was going to need a ton to make all of the beacons to protect me around the ocean monument, because after that last dumb mistake, of not killing the Elder Guardians, and drinking milk, and losing a totem because I lost my invisibility, I will be taking zero chances with those gross, squishy ocean boys. On the next day, I made the decision to do something awful. I was going to commit war crimes against the Iron Golems inside of my villager trading hall because I was pretty sure they're affecting my iron spawn rate and my iron farm, and I needed more iron, damn it. So I grabbed some leads and a bucket of lava, and one by one, I began dragging the Iron Golems out of the trading hall and burning them to death with the lava, super flat style. And uh, yeah, I, I felt pretty bad for this, but like they kept multiplying like rabbits so it, it had to be done. I also decided to leave one iron golem left in the hall just in case a zombie got in or something, but he was kind of just vibing in the same spot for like the rest of eternity. I'm also pretty sure that all of my zombie villagers were actually the cause of all these iron golem breeding, so in the end things kind of worked out. For me at least, not the iron golems. On day 548, I went into the nether and began flying with my elytra down my path back to the wither skeleton farm because I only had five beacons on hand and I was going to need so many more because I was going to cover the ocean monument with sextuple beacons. So when I finally got to the wither skeleton farm, the wither skeletons were spawning slower than they ever have before and I knew something was up. It couldn't just be the enderman at this point. Something somewhere was eating my spawn cap. So I went looking around the forest by my farm and I ran into the mother load of spawn cap wasters. There was a whole fire nation worth of boys over here. So I chopped down some trees and I got to spawn proofing. Except there was so much to do and I really hated doing it. So after about one fourth of the way, I kind of just said screw it and went back to farming wither skeletons because I have had enough distractions for a hundred days. But I mean, hey, just from that little bit of spawn proofing, the farm was already seeing more spawns. And I spent until day 555 here, and I ended up with two stacks of coal blocks, a ton of bones, 
and enough wither skeletons to summon 12 more withers and make three quadruple beacons, which would be perfect because I mean, who needs jump boost in an ocean monument? Small brain. So anyways, I ran back home through the nether and I have a big surprise for everyone. Upon entering my base to the nether portal, I may have added a resource pack that changes my skybox. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just look at those clouds and look at the moon. But yeah, if you guys are interested in using that resource pack, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Also, now that I'm talking about the description, while you're down there, if you're looking for a new keyboard, you should totally check out Kraken Keyboards and use code PAIN because it helps me out. And if you do go and get yourself a keyboard, tag me on Twitter and show me how cool your keyboard is. On day 556, after returning home from the nether, I grabbed the wither skulls from my wither chest and the ones that I had just earned, grabbed some soul sand, and I stepped foot outside to see the beautiful new skybox. And honestly, I really love it, but for some reason, my eyes keep readjusting when I look up at it because the sun is so bright. So I might unfortunately have to disable it. Guess we'll see in the future though. Anyways, I went through the nether portal and then I jumped into the end portal. So that way I could go on a hunt for some chonky wither boys today. And so so I spent the day stabbing away at each and every wither I built and as each wither spawned their first explosion killed some endermen and they dropped me even more wither roses. By the time I was done with the wither executions I ended up with 9 stacks of wither roses and 14 nether stars which meant 14 brand new shiny deluxe beacons. So I went back to my base and crafted them up and just like that I was now a guy with 18 more beacons. On day 557 I gathered a bunch of emerald blocks for my beacons and I grabbed all of my shulkers and I set off to make a sea platform for my supplies. I placed out all of the shulkers in my bed and I began constructing the tier 4 quadruple beacon while being harassed by Sky Satan. And of course, while I was doing this, I got distracted once again by looking at that beautiful skybox. Come on, man, just look at it. Look at it. It's gorgeous. And speaking of skybox, I could have slept away all these sussy phantoms, but nighttime just looks so good. Look at the moon. Isn't it just, it's so real. Anyways, now that I was all set and ready to go, I determined the center four blocks of the monument and I began building out 100 blocks in all four directions. I know I originally said I was going to do 160, but I wanted this monument to be large. So I increased it by 40 on all sides. And this process took all of day 558 and I am already beyond tired of counting and I have just begun this ocean monument project. This was going to be a long time coming but I was excited because I have some pretty crazy ideas for what to do with this and I think you are all going to love them. For the next eight days I counted out and built the entirety of the perimeter of the circle and honestly this process was easier by using this cool website that I found called Pixel Circle Generator where you can choose the size circle you want and it will draw you a pixel circle that you can follow and make perfect circles in Minecraft with. I mean, how else do you think I did all of this without like a major headache? Anyways, I'll leave a link to that tool in the description as well if anyone is interested in using it. Anyways, building this perimeter took a while, so just enjoy this montage. And just like that, I had filled in the perimeter for the circle and honestly, it looks even larger from above. The process of laying out the circle was absolutely ridiculous. I kept screwing up and because nothing was lit up, I had to sleep away each night. So I kind of just wasted more days. But hey, this build is the biggest I have ever built. And when it's done, this is going to look spectacular. On day 568, I added two beacons and I built an inner box around the ocean monument so I could wall off all these jerks so they would leave me alone as I worked. After that, I grabbed the two shulkers full of sand that I had and I began filling in the box. This process took all the way through the next day until I ran out of sand. I was going to need a lot of sand for this project. So I went back to my base, grabbed the rest of my empty shulkers that I had, and I dyed all of them white. They matched. Then I grabbed my juicy desert compass. Yes, that is what I named it. And I took off to the desert. Also, on the way, I may have gotten distracted by another ocean monument that I wasn't sure if I had explored. And while sitting there staring at it, I saw an elder guardian peeking out through the side. So I thought, you know what? Why not? 
I was going to need hella sponge anyways. So I broke into the top room, yeeted the first Elder Guardian, and went down to the main room, killed the second Guardian, and stole all of the gold in the middle. And this monument ended up having two sponge rooms, so I netted a solid 60 sponge. And after getting out, I got to watch the new and improved beautiful sunset. On day 570, I grabbed my elytra and I took back off towards the desert, and like two seconds later, I found another monument. Damn it, I... I can't resist looting. You know the drill. So I broke in, killed some other guardians violently, and I stole their gold and I stole their sponge. After this, I escaped and it turns out the desert was right next to the monument. Nice. So I placed out all of my shulkers, cleaned out my inventory, and I went to sleep before the desert became Florida Disneyland. On days 571 through 573, it was time to get me some sand. I began by building a tier 4 beacon and I gave it haste 2 to make me go sonic fast, even though it has little difference. Whatever. And I began what I would like to call the Wadziification of the desert. I bashed away at sand for three days straight and I ended up with about five shulkers full of sand. Only problem was my shovel was about to break so I had to head all the way back home to repair it and this time I was going to come back with some backups. So I grabbed three of the diamond shovels I had gotten from the end cities and I bought all of the enchantments I would need to make them perfect. I named the first shovel Sand Tsunami. Let me know in the comments if you know what anime that's from. It's Pretty obvious, but good reference nonetheless. After that, I named the second shovel Desert Destroyer because alliteration is funny, and I named the last shovel, uh, Sussy Baka because I ran out of names and I didn't want to stand here for 20 minutes trying to think of a name. On day 574, I went over to the boys to do some beautiful capitalism to repair my shovel and all of the tools, and I ended up with a cool 32 blocks of emerald. But I wanted to make this quick because I was running out of time if I wanted to get the walls for the ocean monument finished by the end of 100 days. So I set back off towards the desert to finish filling up the sand and I spent all the way until day 579 absolutely wrecking that sand's KD ratio. Q sand montage. After spending multiple hours just smacking sand, I flew back to the monument so I could continue imprisoning these jerks in their new tomb. And when I got back, I counted my sand-filled shulkers, and I had ended up with 15, which should actually be enough for the rest of the project if I tear down each wall as I go. The process of getting that sand also burned through three of my four shovels, and I may have almost broken the most important one. I really need to get more netherite. There's not enough time in 100 days, I swear. Now that I had all the supplies I was going to need, it was time to fully trap these mans in their new forever prison. So I spent the next two days straight filling in sand and on day 581 it was complete. I had filled in the first box of sand that would help me drain the monument. However, I had a problem. I couldn't use sponges to drain this middle part yet because it would just fill back in. So later that night I concocted a big brain plan. A planty plan that smelled like pistons. I got the idea from an auto sand piston pusher from multiple people online that are doing their own ocean monuments including Lagundo. So now that I had built it, every time I placed sand, it would push it over until it had filled in 12 rows of sand underwater. This was going to make my life significantly easier. Also, it was going to be faster, and on top of that, I wouldn't have to deal with the jerks smacking me every time I go in the water. On day 583, I had enough of the inner box made that I could finally test out sponges, and uh, yeah, apparently eight blocks wide is too much. So I went into a creative world to properly test it out, and five and six definitely work, and seven mostly works. And I guess I just got unlucky with eight, even though I had tested it in another creative world before, I guess I just did something wrong. I don't know. This is unlucky. So now that I knew how wide I would need each of these columns, I went back to my world and tested it out. And let me just say this now, I don't want to see any of those comments down there roasting me for how badly I may have screwed this up because listen, I'm already kind of ashamed. So instead, you should totally say something like, hey, don't worry, water may have won this battle, but drought will win the war or something cool like that. On day 584, I decided to take a quick break from the Ocean Monument Project to quickly prepare for the Creeper Project that I totally said I would do these 100 days 
And now I was in a time crunch to get it done. But that's okay, because I've already done a test build in a creative world and I know what resources I'm going to need. So I grabbed some shulkers and I started gathering them together. For this build, I am mostly using concrete with a little bit of red wool and some pink terracotta. However, I was going to need a lot of red dye, green dye, lime green dye, white dye, and light gray dye, which meant I was going to need a ton more red flowers and cactus. So the next day, it was back off to the desert I went. And on the way there, I saw a bunch of red flowers, so I stopped by to steal some nature. Except while I was doing this, I had the big brain idea to search for alternative ways to make red dye. And apparently you can use beetroots, which is odd. But hey, I now had a ton of bone meal because of the wither skeleton farms, so that is definitely an easier way to get more red dye in the future. Anyways, after collecting the flowers, I went back to the desert and I spent the rest of the day just clapping some cactus cheeks. On day 585, I got back to my base with an inventory full of a measly four and a half cactuses, which I already threw into the auto smelter for that juicy green dye. While waiting for those to cook, I jumped into the water with the last shovel that was not almost broken, and I gathered as much gravel as I could to fit in my inventory. And after two inventories full, I began crafting all of it into different concrete powders that I was going to need for this project. And now that I had all the resources that I needed, I spent the next four days starting Project Creeper. And honestly, this project was an absolute pain, so the best way that I could show you me building it would be a montage. Q montage. At this point, I had finished the front of the legs, the body, and the front facing creeper head, and the TNT on top, and things were looking really good, especially with all of the speed bumps that I hit along the way. I had to make the creeper disproportionate in size because I was mostly using powder that would fall without supports, and the size of the farm inside required my man to be a thick boy. Anyways, this is where I was going to leave off Project Creeper Fall for these 100 days because I was running out of time fast. In the future, I'm going to fill in all of the sides, add more spawn platforms inside and fix the loot system down below because it was getting super full. Plus now I had this extra massive room inside of the front feet. Overall this project took until day 593 because building like this was kind of hell and now that I was done with this it was going to be back to the ocean monument. If I could at least drain the middle square by the end of these 100 days then I was going to be pretty happy. So now that my creeper was done, kinda, it was back to filling in the sand grid around my monument and this process took the next three days straight day and night and by the time I was done with this this is what it looked like and not gonna lie there is something so satisfying about seeing all of the progress that I've been making it is going to be insane once we fully drain this entire circle so now that everything was set up for the last three days I was on a mission I had to drain each segment as fast as I could using sponges however I only had three stacks of sponges that I had to continuously keep going back to the nether to dry them out and just like that I was seeing just how much time Time, this was really going to take. At this point, it was already day 600 and I was only halfway through draining out the middle part of the monument. But hey, that just means I've got a lot to do in 700 days. I have a creeper farm to expand, creeper design to finish, and now an ocean monument to continue de-oceaning. And after that, the rest is history. I hope you all really enjoyed this movie because just like many of you, I am really going to miss this world. But don't worry because there's tons more to come. Oh, and if if you made it to this part of the video by watching it all the way through, leave a comment saying anime down below. Let's confuse the people who didn't get this far. That is, unless you skipped your way here. Then you should instead just loop this video for a week to think about what you've done. And if this video left you wanting more to watch, then why not go check out my 100 days modded end video that I actually just released. I'm sure you'd love it. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.